Shanann went to, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, this is, uh, I think she got it off Amazon, but this is the, my favorite college sports team. She, was she, wasn't she just there? She was, yeah, just in North Carolina. Yep. So she probably, she actually probably got it from there. Usually she gets stuff from Amazon, but she, this one, I like these shirts a lot. He knows I get to the house, but okay. it's not ready. He can't go in there. But okay. Does he know how you you GPS on his phone? Or yeah, but he wouldn't know like you know where else to go besides my house. Oh, that's true. Okay. That's just, you know, I mean, I mean, yeah, I can tell him if, if he can get to go to my friend's house. If okay, I'm not sure. Like, i am be here for an hour or like well, four hours. Do you do you want me to just go talk to him and let him know when the house is gonna be ready and all that, and when he can go? Cause he can go grab a bite to eat or something, right? Oh yeah, like if there's everything should be open by now around here. So. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm sure well, this has been flying since like five o'clock each of those times. So. <laughs> okay, why don't we knock this out? Okay. Um, I think it's the best thing to do to move past all of this. Um, and then um, I'll go talk to your dad. He'll have the keys. Everything will be good. Okay. Yeah. You have this number. Can you call him when you're done? There, there's like no signal on this place. So. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's why I couldn't talk to you earlier. I could. Yeah, it was. Between him and me, we'll figure out how to communicate with <laughs> him and get him where he needs to go. Okay. I've been getting text messages from like a lot of news places. Okay. I don't know really like you know, I think that's part of maybe what we game plan today. Um I mean not not just here like yeah. like today show or I don't like know what to do with that. Well, I think that you certainly can do whatever you need to or want to do. Um but I think that after this, if we knock this out, we get we know we get back to the team and we make a plan. Okay, so um, we get different like advice like as far as like her mom says, like if it's a kidnapping, then I would. She says not to talk to anybody. Yeah. But so, like, I'm not like torn of what to do. Well, I her think, mom told you not to talk. Yeah, her mom's saying because she was advised by someone like a like police or a detective there that like if he talks to the media, it might. Oh, like, to the media. Okay. Mm -hmm. you're, like, yeah. I thought you're talking about. To the oh no no, was, like, no no <laughs> no like just the media in general like yeah. it's gone. It's I mean today's show before America's trying to get a hold of me and my parents friends. So I just sometimes we release details that you know maybe the public they want to know. Me. I know. So and that's I'm, why I'm, like I don't want to impede with what's going on here and put things out because I've watched enough shows. Shows I say like all right, don't put things out there before. At least because then you don't know if somebody really knows or if they just saw it on TV. Mm -hmm. well, let's do this. Um, I think for, while you're doing this, it's going to be completely okay to ignore your phone and the media and everyone, right? Okay. So let's get this out of the way. I think it'll really clear your mind a little bit, right? All right. Um, so why don't we why don't we put a halt on the phone, on texting people, on Good Morning America, all those stuff. I've never tried to do Let's I'm focus on this. this. Yeah. Let's focus on this. Let's knock it out, and then let's talk. Right. All right. All right. All right. So and Carly, you'll come in. I'll go get you when we're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have a seat right here, Chris. Sit on this. Yep. I know. It's, I'll explain what that is here in a little bit. Yeah. But you don't have to worry. It, it's not on or anything right now. It's not gonna. It's not gonna buzz you or anything. <laughs> never. I've, I've never done this before. I know. A lot of people haven't had polygraphs before. It's not like a normal thing that people go through. Um, yeah. A lot of people, like obviously in law enforcement and places like that, they have to go through polygraphs for their job, but. Other than that, most people never take a polygraph in their entire life, so. Yes, yeah, so I have like no idea like what to expect. <laughs> yeah, so how are you feeling today? I'm sick to my stomach, honestly. Like, the first day I thought, okay, she was just somewhere. Sure. And after yesterday, all the activity at my house, I was, I didn't know, it, it went to the other extreme. I was, I've just been like sick to my stomach that if somebody has her or she's in trouble and the kids are not safe. Either. Right, right. Well, and I think that's 
totally awesome that you're here today. I mean, I commend you. We do this in all of our machine person cases, so don't think that we're just singling you out. Like, oh my gosh, they want me to take a polygraph. Anytime, you know, someone was the last person to see people or, you know, there's it's a missing person case, we start from the inside and we work out. I mean, that's pretty much what we do. So I've done um, polygraphs on the Jessica Ridgeway case. I don't know if you were here for that. Um, the name the, sounds familiar. The girl that went missing in Westminster. And oh, that, yeah. yeah. And then uh, just the one that we had in Thornton um, last year or the year before. Um, so we do this all the time. So don't please don't think that you're being singled out. Like, this is, this is one way that... Um, if you didn't have anything to do with it, that we can let the investigators know, the people that really do need to know, that are looking for your wife and your little girls, um, to let them know, like, you know what, don't focus on Chris, focus over here, because obviously we've already cleared him, he's good to go, now focus on the real person that did tell me to this, you know, okay. to, to Shannon and um, little girl, so, okay. okay. So I am, um, my name is Tammy. If you can call me Tammy, I'm an agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. So it's the CBI. It's kind of like the FBI, but mm -hmm. for Colorado. Right. Um, so we, what our role is, uh, just so you know, is anytime a law enforcement agency or a district attorney's office or the governor needs assistance with a case, they can call the CBI to come out and assist them. Mm -hmm. So obviously in this you know, type of case, um, they're calling in all the resources that they can which includes me, um, who works out of the Denver office, and I also do polygraphs. So they asked me if I would be willing to come here and chat with you and, and hopefully get you cleared up and, and on your way, because okay. it sounds like that's what you're here for, and, and yeah, that's absolutely. awesome, because that's mostly what people want to do. It's like, if you're not you're looking at the wrong person, like, I just want to show you I had nothing to do with this, and then you guys can get on your way and yeah. you know do your investigation somewhere else. So. Uh -huh. Because that, that helps us, because then we don't have to keep focusing on Chris. Does that make sense? Nice, yeah. Okay. Um, this polygraph today is going to be recorded. Okay. So obviously, it would be dumb if I didn't, because what if at the end I said, you said whatever, and you really didn't say it? Obviously, you could go back and look at the recording. Uh, there's a camera right there. And there's also a backup digital recording that I'm doing. Okay. It fails me the second I try and trust it, it, it always fails me. So, um, so you said that um, your cell phone, is it off right now? Yeah, that would be great because um, we can't have anything like buzzing, vibrating, ringing, and that kind of stuff. So um, this will take um, at least a couple hours um, right. to do the polygraph because it's a real structured type of interview process. I have to go through a bunch of things with you. Um, you're going to get the same polygraph that I give, you know, I gave someone last week. So um, it's very structured, and we go, you know, in order and that kind of stuff. And you're going to know the wording to all of the questions I'm going to ask you on the test um, before we even take the polygraph. So don't, don't. A lot of people come in here and they think, oh, they're just going to, you know, attach all these components to me and then just start asking me random questions that I've never heard before. And of course, I'm going to react to that. That's not at all how poly polygraph works. Like, works. Yeah, you're actually going to probably know more about polygraphs than anyone before you leave here today, just because I explain everything to you and how everything works. Okay. Um, obviously, you're probably nervous about taking today's test. Honestly, I would think something is wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming no. in here to take a polygraph. Yeah. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide, it is nerve-wracking. Oh, yeah. I have taken tons of polygraphs, obviously, in my training. Um, I went to 10 weeks for training. I've been a polygrapher about, for about five years. Um, I went to the best school in the country. So I want you to have confidence in the fact that if you had nothing to do with this disappearance, like we're going to find that out today. Okay. I have the best training that they offer in the United States. Um, I, we use the most validated testing. Um, that no way I'm going to ask you the question. So believe me, if you had nothing to do with this, I will be able to show them that today. Okay. Right. So that should give you some confidence that, um, you know, this is how. Like, you're going to be clear today if you have nothing to do with it, okay? Yes. Um, there's actually only, you know, nervousness or anxiety cannot cause you to fail a polygraph. A lot of people think that, too, oh. that if they're really nervous that it could cause them to fail. Um, if that were the case, no one would be allowed to take polygraphs because every single person is nervous or anxious about taking the polygraph, okay? I thought that's how it worked. On nervousness? Yeah. No. <laughs> there's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? Um, the first way would be if you fail to follow my instructions. I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to sit still, how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? okay. The second way would be if you choose to lie to me today. Okay. Lie to me today, okay? Um, obviously, this is about 100% truth. Um, even if there's, you know, something that you didn't tell the investigators, you know, since 
Monday, I guess, is when you ended up, the police were involved. If there's something that you didn't tell them since Monday, like, that is totally fine. Like, I get it. You know, people aren't going to remember every single detail every time they mm -hmm. talk to someone. As long as you tell me what the truth is today, you will have no problems passing, okay? Mm -hmm. I promise you that. And obviously, I mean, I hope that, you know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today, right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, mm -hmm. you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with mm -hmm. Shanann and the little girl's disappearance, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. And it's Celeste and Bella, is that right? Yeah, I'll, I'll call her CC too. CC, okay, okay. If that comes up. Okay, perfect. So, and I know very, um, small, very small amounts about the case. Okay. Um, just because I want to know less about the case because I want you to be able to tell me about the case. I don't want to have some preconceived notions about the case and that's why I don't want you to assume that I already know details because you told Detective so and so. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. I want you to be able to tell me like you were telling someone for the very first time about what happened when you get into actually talking about what happened, okay? Um, obviously, Chris, you're not under arrest. I have no plans on arresting you. Um, at any point today, if you decide you want to leave, the door is right there. There is a, it locks us in here. Oh, uh, no, babe. Yeah, I saw that last night. So there's a key in there now. So you can, um, if you just turn the key, it lets you out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at any point today, even after all these components are attached to you, if you decide at that point, you know what, I don't want to take this polygraph, I don't want to be here, this is BS, whatever, that is completely fine. Just please allow me to unattach my components before you drag my $6,000 instrument on the floor <laughs> and run out of here. Oh. Um, and yeah. it's kind of a little maze back here, so I will show you the way out at any point if you decide, you know what, I don't want to take this polygraph, I don't want to be here, I don't want to do this. That is completely fine. The door does have to be shut for privacy just because... Um, noise does affect the polygraph, and um, I will read you your rights today, and that's just because the polygraph um, components are pretty restrictive, you know, they go around your chest and stuff, and you may feel at some point that you're not free to leave, but like I said before, at any point, I will unattach all the components and, and show you the way out if you decide, even in the middle of the polygraph, if you don't want to continue to take it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to give you kind of a road map of where we're going to go today, just so you know what to expect and that kind of stuff, okay? So we're going to first start by going over a rights and consent form, and that's that um, Miranda rights form. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear it on TV shows constantly. Most kids can recite the Miranda rights. Um, we're going to go over that, and again, it's just so that you know you're free to leave and that um, you're not under arrest, okay? And then we're going to do a consent form, and that's just something that's required by my bosses to say that you're actually consenting to um, the CDI doing a polygraph on you, okay? Um, the, after that, we do a biographical and a medical form, um, and that's basically to make sure that you're a suitable subject to take the actual polygraph. I want to make sure that you didn't smoke, you know, oh, all smoke. the weed, you know, the night before. I wish that didn't normally happen, but a lot of people smoke drugs before they come in here because they're really nervous and they're trying to calm themselves down. Some people take a lot of meditation. Some people hear voices. Um, all of those things are things that I cannot um, conduct a polygraph on someone if, if they have those things going on. So I just need to make sure that none of that stuff is affecting you. You seem very lucid. You're talking to me. You're making sense. You know, you're not jittery. You're not moving around, that kind of stuff. So I don't think we're going to have any issues, but we just, I want to vet all of that out and just kind of, you know, make sure that you have enough sleep and you're not, I mean, obviously no one's getting a lot of sleep. Yeah. But, um, probably since Monday, but um, just so we can talk about all of that, okay? Sure. Um, and then after that, we're going to discuss the issue of why you're here, okay? I want to know everything you know, and again, I don't want you to assume that I already know something. I want you to kind of start from the beginning and, like, telling someone, maybe, you know, a friend that you hadn't talked to since any of this has happened, and you're basically having to relay all of the details of exactly what happened with Shanann and the girls, okay? Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, we're actually going to take a bathroom break. I'm going to let you take a break, you can use the bathroom, get something to drink. That water there is for you if you need that at any point today. And then you're going to come back in here and we're, I'm going to explain to you how and why the polygraph works. Again, you're probably going to know more about polygraph than you care to know before you leave here. Um, I'm going to explain how it works and then uh, we're going to go over the questions that are going to be on the test. And like I said before, you're going to know the words to every single question. So it's not that... Um, and we're going to discuss that even before we even take the polygraph, like what those questions mean. And, and just so you are completely clear in your mind, when Tammy asked me this question, if you know exactly what she means, if you know exactly what she's asking, and this is the answer that I have for that question. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we're going to go over those. I get, I let you practice answering them like two or three times. So and then we'll go through them repeatedly. If you need me to go over them four or five times, just, you know, before we actually take the test, I'm more than happy to do that too. I want you very comfortable with the questions and that you know what they mean and, and how you're going to answer them, okay? Um, after that, we're going to go, um, we're actually going to do a practice test. And again, that just lets me know that you're a suitable subject to take the actual polygraph. And then after that, we actually get into the actual testing. That's why it takes a long time, is because there is a pretty big process that goes along with it. Okay. Work. Yeah. So did you, um, you're not working today, right? No. Do you have a date that you're going back to work? Not at the moment. No. How long have you worked for In the Dark, though? January 2015. About three and a half years, almost. Yeah. You like it there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I worked for Covenant Testing Technologies before that. Well, what is that? For that's a contract company for oil and gas. Oh, and okay. Before that, I worked for Ford for 11 years as a technician. Oh, my goodness. So does that translate into... No, well, it, it's, stuff? it's mechanical. I mean, like, I like to fix things. And when... I was like, when I moved out here, uh, I worked along my Ford. Okay. And I moved, I moved up pretty fast there, but I hit that like, kind of plateau that kind of just like I couldn't go, it got stagnant. Mm -hmm. And I was having this carpal tunnel syndrome on both my hands. And mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was bad. Like I was doing this like all day, you know, like it was, it was bad. Yeah. So you still have that? I don't even know. Can you get rid of carpal tunnel? Oh, like it was just the offset of it. Like oh. I wasn't like full on any half surgery type thing, but like now it's, like it's so much better. Like yeah, I don't have to, I don't, have yeah, it doesn't have the pain. Like there's a lot of mechanical things you do in oil and gas, but it was, it's not as repetitive as the car industry is. So are you, uh, excuse my language, are you a worker bee or are you like a boss guy? A little bit of both. Okay. I'm you're a, a, your hands uh, dirty too? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, like a, I'm a field coordinator right okay. now for, for the area. I have uh, six route operators and two rover operators. So that's what we, I'm uh, kind of just over them right now and kind of, we kind of game plan, like what kind of, we look on the computer on our well summary screen and kind of go from there to see what kind of problems we might have throughout the day. Sure. And just kind of like, all right, this is what we need to do. You go here, there, there, there. Okay. Try everybody's doing kind of middle part of the day and they might need help and try to get Everybody checked out by like 3, 3.30 or something like that. Oh, that's nice. But yeah. you were going to work for your... Life. Yeah, we start for your like 6, 6.30, somewhere around there, so... Super early? Oh, yeah, yeah, we got there early. We just never know what could happen, so... That's true. That is true. So what... Do you have an ID on you, Chris, that I could see? So I have... The biographical form has some, like, dark like, license numbers and that kind of stuff, so I'll just keep this just for a second. So I do the other form. Are you named after anyone? No. No? My middle name, just my dad's middle name, but other than that, no. Okay. If I mispronounce your wife's name, please, like, correct me. I don't know. Just, just, just think of shenanigans. shenanigans. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah. I got it. That's the way she, she tells people. Does her family call her shenanigans? Um, so the way they, they spelled it, it was like Shan Ann, like with an apostrophe, but she just called it Shan Ann. That's kind of, this is, this is, she was named after Shana Na. Oh that nice. Okay. Okay, so. Is it B E L L A? For Beth Bella, yes. Okay. And Celeste is C E L E S T E. Perfect. All with the same last name. Yes. Right? Okay. So, um, Chris, this is that advice and rights form. This just says that um, Agent Tammy Lee says, I'm an agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, and I wish to talk to you about auction and disappearances. Uh, Shanann, <laughs> sorry, she, Bella, and Celeste Watts, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and to have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of those rights when I read to you, Chris? So I'll just have you write a yes when we get to that. And then having those rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now and obviously go through with the polygraph? Okay, perfect. So what I want you to do is go ahead and answer both of those as yeses, if you still agree with that, and then sign and date that signature line if you would.
Have you always been a Tar Heels fan? Yes. Fifteen. It is young. My son is a huge Tar Heels fan. I don't even know why he likes them, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe because the Nuggets suck. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's good college to he used to coach here too, and he was a Carolina guy. Oh, he was? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you go to any, like, do the Nuggets play them? Oh, no, no, North Carolina is at the uh, college. Oh, college. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Sorry. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting all my teams mixed up. You're right. Did you go to college then? No, I wish I did. You that was nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, where did you go to college? I went to NASCAR Tech in, in North Carolina as well. NASCAR is the name of it? Yeah, it was a, it was a mechanical school. Oh, really? Yeah. Very cool. I focused on regular automotive and then the NASCAR portion as well. Oh, very cool. Yeah, you learn a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that like kind of elite mechanical school? It was, it was part of the Universal Technical Institute. Like, it was part of their program, plus the NASCAR part, plus I went to the Ford, the FAC program there as well. So. Wow. That's awesome. Do you have any other nicknames or anything that people call you? It's Chris. It's Chris. It's some, like, just random ones at work. Just didn't make any sense. So. Like what? Oh, uh, some call me like Rain Man because like I when I go to a site or something like if I do it once I'll remember it and it, this is one of those one of those things. Like do you remember like phone numbers and license plates? Oh, like, like all like that? well, that stuff. I don't I don't really pay attention to that stuff. But it was like when I was really young, my grandma used to always quiz me on like uh, state capitals like every day, and like when I was waiting for my sister to come out from from middle school or stuff like that, she was, she was always like just pinging stuff off my memory. Really? And it just like hit everything. That's, I think that's how it built. Yeah. Like, what it was, what it is. Yeah. That was your grandma that did that? Yeah. My mm-hmm. mom's mom. Is she still alive? No, she passed a few years ago. Is she pretty old? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Was a good life? Yeah, she was. Good. Repost with your grandparents? Yeah, I went over to her house every morning, every uh, afternoon after school. And oh. helped her out. Nice. Being outside, stuff on the inside. And she always cooked me lunch, some German food. Colonels and goulash, snitzel, oh. all kind of stuff like that. My um, first husband was German, so we had German sausages and rice all the time. And then just heard German food. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Shanann's um, legal name is Hypenian? I've never seen her written that way, but oh, okay. that's the way her parents always said. That's what I tell me did it. Okay. And in the past three days, and then. Okay. Easier to say it when I spell it out, yeah. but for, I think you wanted to say Shannon, of course, but there's a lot of people call her Shannon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her parents sometimes call her Shannon. Have you talked to her parents at all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are they being pretty good? Mm-hmm. Good. Are they coming here? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Like, my dad's you, here. Your dad's here. Is there yeah. any other family members of yours coming? Not right now. No. no. So my dad came out and just for support. He just got here this morning. That's fine. Nice. That was nice. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is that consent that my bosses require. And this just says Agent Tammy Lee has advised me that she's investigating the matter of obviously the disappearance again of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. I hear by saying that to the best of my knowledge, I'm in good physical and mental health. I also state that no force, duress, or undue influence has been used against me, and that I am consenting to this polygraph interview on my own free will. I understand that the results of this process will be released to, obviously, the Frederick Police Department, the District Attorney's Office, and the FBI. Um, it would be very silly for you to sit in here and take a polygraph if I couldn't release your result of hopefully passing to the people that need to know. Does right. that make sense yeah. to you? And it says, I hereby give my voluntary consent to undergo a polygraph interview, and I understand that this process is subject to both audio and video recording and monitoring, which we've already talked about. Okay. So if you agree with that consent, you just sign and date it. So where did you stay last night? I know that. Nick and Amanda's house. Nick, Nick and Amanda's there. And how do you know them? So Amanda used to be a director at Primrose School where um, Bella and TC go. But then she she transferred to another place and Shanann was getting her own thrive. 
and that's how they how they met. She so the um, Amanda transferred to another primrose. Yeah. Okay. So like, Shanann Shanann couldn't like talk to them about Thrive, the direct sales business. Like while they're at like they were they weren't allowed to like talk like you know outside like if their child goes there not some about the school rules or something oh, like that. Okay. So once she left, she talked to her about Thrive and got and got her on Thrive and then. Me and Nick started running together here and there. So, uh, so is she like, is she like a, what do they call them, a downline from Shane? Yes. Okay, so she's like one of the sellers that... Yeah, like all the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I don't even understand Thrive, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm even a chick, and I don't understand what all of that Thrive stuff is. Uh, it's it's vitamins and minerals, okay. and it's all plant-based, non-GMO stuff. It's really, like, it's really healthy for you. Yeah. Do you do it? Yeah. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was 245 pounds when I started. No way. Yep. How long ago was that? 2016. Wow. I've been doing it for a while. Oh my gosh. So, I think I, the only thing I know about Prime is like patches or something. Is that yeah. what that is? Well, it's the three steps. You have like vitamins. You have two patches you take when you wake up, two pills. Okay. And then you take a shake with water and throw a patch. You don't have a patch on right now? No, no. Oh, I want to see what a patch looks like. Uh, it's just like a little square piece that just kind of goes on your skin and it's like, it absorbs, like it opens like up your pores a little bit and the buttons kind of absorb like through your skin, like time release throughout the day. Like, can you tell you feel better when you have the patch on? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. How much are patches? Just the patches themselves? Uh-huh. Or do you, are you supposed to do this in combination with all the other The three patches? steps. Is, oh, okay. That's what I call it, the three steps. So like... I feel like you could sell it. Uh, <laughs> I she, you know she, about it. You she, she has me on the uh, as, as like I signed up underneath her. Oh, okay. So like you know I'm part of her team. Oh, okay. But she kind of runs that part of it because she knows like I'm not the type of seller. I'm not a seller. Yeah. I don't like. You're not a salesman. Yeah, you know, like I would like say too much. She says about the product. So like, like sometimes it's not so great because of this or yeah it's like I would just give out like too much information about the product instead of just having like them call her do you sell it to any of the people that you work with there's one person that I work with that uses it who is that Troy Troy yeah you work. I think I heard that name Troy McCoy or yeah. something that's mm-hmm. a funny name <laughs> yeah they are calling the real McCoy the real McCoy <laughs> and I was like it sounds like actually you know Troy McCoy <laughs> so he works for you, is that right? Or he works with me. He, he's he's got a field coordinator. Oh, okay. But he's got a lot more experience than I do. He worked in Kansas before he came here. Kind of showed you the ropes. Yeah, he showed me a lot of all different things, and I picked up a few things that he didn't know, and just kind of like we worked together pretty well. Nice. Is this um, the correct address for you? Yeah, it yeah. should be that. This is Troy Mary? Yes. Oh, yes. So, do your family hang out at all? A few times, yeah. His kids are older. Oh, okay. Like, how old are they? Like 11, 10, 8, and 7. Okay. Somewhere in there. There's four kids? Two, two of them. Oh, okay. Like a blended family? Yeah. I think he met her when she had, had two kids already. Oh. Yeah. So, what's your um, social security number? Chris? 241. Okay. Six seven three three eight seven. And your cell phone? Now one zero three zero nine one seven zero two. And how? Uh, what's your date of birth? Five sixteen eighty five. What does that make you say? Thirty three. Where were you born? At? In Fayetteville, North Carolina. How do you spell Fayetteville? F A Y E T T E B I L L E. You should say it, Bill? Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is your 225. Is that correct? 180. Okay. Is that a lie on here? Yeah. What year was <laughs> that? That was 2014. No, I was 225, 225 then. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm more late. What, what do you think made you gain weight then? Celeste pregnancy. Oh, really? I gained more weight than she did. You're a sympathetic eater. <laughs> when I went and got her Oreos, I ate a few on the way upstairs. I'm not going to lie. That happened a lot. 
Now, can you do the thrive stuff when you're pregnant? Yes. Yeah. Safe for that? Yeah. Yeah, because it's all natural or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Certain, there's uh, different variants of the patches that she can't use because, of, like, some of it's for weight loss. Oh, you don't want to lose weight while you're pregnant. Right. Or it's more like for fat loss, and that's like they, they recommend not using that type of patch. Okay. So as far as um, growing up goes, and I'm actually done with that. Please put that away. Um, who all was in your family? Who did you live with? Uh, my mom and dad. Okay. My sister. And your sister? Yeah. So just two kids? Yes. Okay. And what's your sister's name? Jamie. Have you um, did Jamie come in, or talked to Jamie? I talked to Jamie and her husband. Yeah. Yeah. How old is Jamie? So she'll be 40 this year. Okay. She's 39 right now. Okay. So she's a little... Yeah, she's seven years older than me. Yeah. You were at home by yourself for a little while, huh? Yeah, we, we didn't really get close until I got like older because that was such a big age discrepancy. Mm -hmm. So So you get along with her well now, oh, yeah. and her husband. So yeah. Do they have kids? Two. Two kids? Two. Yeah. Older their kids? Ten and seven. Do you get to see them very often? Or? I just saw them like when I was in North Carolina. Oh, you did? Yep. Nice. When were you in North Carolina? So it was the August 1st and 7th. Nice. Okay. Any other questions? And how far did you get in school? So I graduated from high school and I got through the NASCAR Tech program. Nice. So you got a GED or an actual diploma? So it's like a certificate, I guess. It's not really a diploma because it doesn't have like English, math, science there. It's just strictly like mechanical. No, but it's through high school. Oh, yeah, I got a diploma. You got a diploma. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. And then you got a, I'm sorry. Like, like, like a certificate from NASCAR Tech that I complete the programs. Like, I guess it can't be a degree without, you know, like English, math, and science and stuff like that. Did you always know that that's what you wanted to do when it's the car stuff? Uh, it was. If I wanted, if I could go back, like I'd probably just use that more of a, like a hobby, mm -hmm. and maybe like dive more into the technology part of it, like because we had like an academy of applied technology when I was there, mm -hmm. and the high mm -hmm. school I was in, maybe go into more of the computer programming part of it. So are you like a pretty techie guy? No, I'll say techie, but I understand like numbers and math a lot. Like that's like with uh, working on these wells, like, there's a lot of programming, a lot of setting up these wells to make them run and like using the numbers, the pressures to optimize the wells is something. You already lost me. Like I, 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 do that that job. Job. I do not do that job. That's why I help Troy. Like he knows more of like the stuff that was like 10 years ago type of thing. And I know more about, I've kind of like grasped the more of the stuff that's happening right now. Sure. And that's how like we kind of like work together. He's like, if you have to work on a pumping unit, like, like, if I work on like a normal well and setting up like the setting it up, he's just like, here you go. Mm -hmm. Like I will just watch. But does that translate into like um like my husband is a techie guy in our family, but like he sets up all of our routers, like he like when I get a new phone, he sets up my phone for me just because he understands he has that brain that I don't have as far as being a techie person. So are you mm -hmm. kind of that person in your family? I, I, yeah, I, can, yeah, I, can, uh, I can do that kind of stuff. Uh, I can't like do code or anything. Like right. That, but you're not writing with computer code? No, I can't. I'm not the one that's not going to do all that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Awesome. So in your job now, like what is your title? Oh, field coordinator. Field coordinator. Okay. And you've done that for three and a half years or whatever? So I was, not, I was, I was an operator. Oh. I was like, well, it's, it's the same. Like you're, you're an operator. You're operating the oil and gas locations. This was just, I was the operator, and then I was the operator, but slash rover. Like, I would be going around helping people, and now I went up to field coordinator. It's like, now I just kind of, like, tell people, like, this is where we need to go, and, like, we need help, let's go there. That's so when did you actually get promoted to that? When one of our other field coordinators, he got, went to a different group, the HG Ops group, and our other field coordinator had to go down to Texas to help, so me and Troy got elevated up. So I what happened. Okay. We're just kind of backfilling. We didn't know like if it was permanent or not, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be permanent. So wow, that's awesome. So tell me about um, like can you give me a synopsis of your childhood, like what your parents did for a living? You know, my you my dad was a parts manager for Ford dealership. Okay, just kind of one of the cars things came right. from. See it. And my mom, she was like a like a secretary and notary for a used car used car dealership. Oh, okay. So like yeah, she oh she's like, she sold cars too, but like she's more of a secretary notary and kinda of 
just, she bounced around a couple different used car dealerships. My dad stayed at the same one, changed the name a little bit, changed names. Then he went to like a different one, but it was same, he did the same thing. And he did like parts manager and buy shop manager. And that's where he's still at now. So how did you see you grew up as far as like um, your family structure is? Were you guys religious? Was there a lot of discipline in the home? You know, like, or who was the disciplinarian in the home? Um, so like, we went to church, I would say, not like every Sunday, but pretty regularly, you know. And what church did you guys go to? It was like First Baptist Church. Okay. And I mean, discipline, I, I was the quiet kid. I was the, you know, I just kind of. All the, I mean, my sister was the rebellious one that always, you know. You're like, I'm a good one. It's like I never <laughs> like, <laughs> And my sister was the one that got the most of the, the she, she was the one that showed me, like, I, that's what I don't want to do. Right. <laughs> and I wake up to my mom and sister pretty much arguing every, every morning. That's all I went Okay. They're like, I don't want to wear this. I don't want to wear that. I'm like, okay. And you're like, uh, Mom, what do you want me to wear? I'll wear whatever you want. I just don't know. They do it, you know, somewhere today. Right. Kind of thing. But yeah, like, my, I mean, my dad, he was a disciplinarian. He was? Yeah. What kind of discipline did you guys have in the home? Just, I mean, it wasn't like physical or anything like that. It was just, you know, like, just verbal, like, you know, this is what you need to do. And just all that. Like, if my dad ever raised his voice, I knew that was like, that was, that was my work phone. Oh, okay. I was like, well, forget about that. Okay. Um, so, what kind of now? I'm not in the middle of the test. <laughs> no, you're good. I have two phones too, and it's hard to keep track of all the stuff. Yeah, my work phones are all embedded. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you said your dad was a disciplinarian, but he yeah. just. I mean, it was verbal, like, because, like, if the theory was, I knew something was, like, was like, okay, that, that's okay. <laughs> I'm good there. Like, right. Did anyone struggle with, like, drug or alcohol abuse or anything like that in your family? No, I mean, my dad did at one point, but it was, like, after I left. Like after I graduated and everything, and that just like, because my sister, she came, she would leave and she'd come back, leave and come back, leave and come back. She'd never like, like run away kind of thing? All her life. She would um, move, like, she went to East Carolina, then that didn't work out, so she came back home. She moved to a different place, and that didn't work out, she came back home type thing. And like, when I left, I was like, I was on my own, and I was like self sufficient, and I never came back, and I think that hit him pretty hard. So they expected you to come back to you? Oh, he, he just, he, well, he was used to me being around. Like, I, you know, he's my hero and my best friend. Your dad is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's where I was, that's where I think that kind of hurt him a little bit, because, like, once I left, I, you know, I didn't back. So, tell me, when did you, so you're talking about for college? Like, as soon as you graduated? Yeah. You moved out? So, is NASCAR close to where you guys live? Like, no, like, once I graduated, high school, I moved more to North Carolina. That's about two hours away. Okay. And that's, that's where I live. Never I never, I never moved back. I mean, I came back to visit, but I never moved back. Okay. So you go to college, uh, is it a four-year college, two-year college? Yeah, that program I finished in 52 weeks. So it was like a year and a half, almost two. Okay. Oh, well, I actually went. Like uh, 72 weeks, sorry. Okay. 72 weeks. So a year and a half. Um, and then where did you go after that? I worked in Morsel Ford and worked there for... Till 2012, so that was like 2003. So when I was going to NASCAR Tech, and I was working there as like a porter, moving cars around, changing the world here and there, type thing. And then once I graduated, they moved me into more of a like a line tech as far as like actually fixing things. Okay. So from 2003 to 2012, I was there. From 2012 to 2014, I was a mom board. Okay. Did you have like any high school sweethearts or like girlfriends from NASCAR Tech or? There's like there was no. There's probably no girl in NASCAR town, no, I would imagine, but there was, there was like a handful of girls that actually went there, so no, it was like, I didn't have any girlfriends early really after high school. Okay, what about when you got done with NASCAR town? Oh, yeah, like that, there was girlfriends like that from in Mooresville mm -hmm. in there, so nothing really serious. Nothing serious? Yeah, I met Shanann in 2010. Oh, 2010? Yeah. Okay, and how long did you guys date before you got married? I'm assuming you're married? Yeah, uh, 2012 when we got married. Okay, dated a couple years? Mm -hmm. Now, does she live in Marshall? She lives in Belmont sometimes. So how do you meet her? Through my cousin's wife. And her, my cousin's wife and Shanann, they knew each other from like, like a, from a wheel shop that she ran. That Shanann ran or the cousin's she, wife? No, that Shanann ran. She ran like three different stores. Like auto parts? Uh, wheels, tires, audio, custom stuff. Gosh, you're just all in that. All in that. <laughs> 
sounded crazy. Um, okay, so we're gonna. Um, I'm just gonna ask you some of the medical questions just to make again sure mm-hmm. that you're a suitable subject. And you said you've never taken a polygraph. Mm-hmm. Uh, how would you describe your condition right now? Good, fair, or poor? I'll say good. Good. Okay. Have you had any major surgeries or injuries within the last six months? Are you any in any discomfort right now? As far as like pain and like yeah. yeah, no, not really. Okay. Well, maybe mental anguish or whatever, but just like, yeah, like physical or like my stomach kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, you're not pregnant. Nope. Have you eaten in the last 24 hours? I had a pizza last night and protein shake this morning. But, so. Okay. What time did you have the pizza? So right when I left here, so it's like 11. And what time did you have the protein shake? Probably about 7.30. Okay. Is that with all your three-step process? Mm-hmm. Okay. What time did you um, go to bed last night? Right about 12.30. Okay. And what time did you get up? Right about five and just kind of looked at my phone. Okay. And you you stayed at the other Amanda and Amanda house. Okay. okay. Um, and how would you rate your sleep fit fair or poor? Is there anything between poor and fair? <laughs> um, I'll put it in the middle. Okay. Okay. I'll give you that box. Have you had any alcohol within the last 24 hours? Do you drink alcohol? Oh, no, it's like if I'm going out somewhere, like with friends coming over, it's, I don't drink by myself. Okay. That's not, I don't think that's the least. How often do, would you say that you drink uh, in a given week? Like how many beverages would you have? If I drink something, just be like one or two. One or two beers? Yeah, beer. I don't, I don't do it. No beer. hard alcohol? No. Okay. Um, any legal or illegal drugs consumed within the last 24 to 48 hours? No. That includes even cough medicine, you know, mm-hmm. anything like that. No. So you just had um, vitamins, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we, um, Chris, we're going to discuss the reason why you're here, okay? <laughs> so now what I would like you to do is again kind of treat me like um you know someone that has no idea about anything and that you actually have to start from the entire beginning like kind of start when um i would say when you met shanann just kind of explain your relationship i guess just so i understand it um as far as you know meeting in 2010 and you know when the kids came about and that kind of stuff and then just bring me up to the point of um you know yesterday okay all right so 2010 so we met you met we met pretty much through Facebook because of my cousin's wife. And she like recommended us as friends type thing. And that's how we kind of started talking. And our first date was at a movie theater. Didn't really impress her much because like, I was like, it was actually a nice theater. I didn't really know what I was walking into as far as like a walk in. And there was like a doorman and he was all dressed in a suit. And I was in camo shorts and DC shoes and I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, hopefully I'm not I'm very underdressed for this. But like, I walk in, I see her, and she's all dressed really nice, and like, she she told me like, like after the fact, like, man, I hope it's mine. <laughs> 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 kind, of, kind of deal, like, because like we know each other look like, so like, I wasn't really dressed for the, for what we were doing, and 
But on the second day, I actually made him say, again, we're in the same thing because I kind of forgot what I wore. But I went to a Kid Rock concert and like, I think that's kind of where I went, I won it over because like we actually got to like the actual concert and like forgot our, like, I forgot my ID so I couldn't actually get in. So I actually ran back like two miles to the car and got it and came back. And I was just like, I mean, I was just like soaking wet. I was just like, it was like middle of July, August, and like South Carolina and humidity and everything like that. It's on Army base. So I was just like, I ran back, got it, and everything like that. And then I think it was our next date, we actually went to Myrtle Beach. And like, she had lupus. Well, her lupus was really like acting up in North Carolina. So like, like she had like these flare ups, joint pains, all that kind of thing. And we were driving back, like, she laid on me pretty much the entire way back. And I think that's when, like, she realized, right, this guy's actually pretty, pretty nice because, like, he didn't ask, he didn't tell me, like, all right, get off my lap or type thing. Like, I just let her just rest on me the entire way back. It was, like, two and a half hour ride from Royal Beach to Charlotte, the Belmont area. But, yeah, we just, everything flourished from there. Like, in 2011, I, I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. Like, that, that was around our anniversary. And, um, and did a ride there on the beach at night. And I could tell, I mean, she was extremely tired, and I was like, I just want to do this. I was like, I want to do it, like, today. And she knew, like, like so why are you being so, like, persistent to get me, like, out here right now? I was like, let's, let's go out to the beach. It's a nice night. I posted her on the beach, said yes, and everybody was, everybody was ecstatic and everything. And she, she loves, she's very organized. She's, like, OCD about, like, organization, putting things, like, that like, we saw, like, the pantry. She, like, everything was just, like, named. And a container all the way down. Like it's very easy for if you just came into our house, you would you would know what stuff was. You would know like where everything was. It would be easy. So like everything was just she was planning the way everything was great. Right. And then in 2012, she were here, but she was planning the wedding from here because everybody was back in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it was a guess you call it destination wedding if you want. Could we fly back to that? But we got married in like the Double Tree Hilton Hotel that was there. It was like in the court. It was in November, and it was underneath one of the big tents and everything it was beautiful. And it went. It was. It was. It was amazing. And we went to Myrtle Beach for the for the honeymoon. And then 2013 in December 17th, that's when Bella was born. Like we've been trying for a while, and nothing was happening as far as getting pregnant or whatnot. And she's, well, thing <laughs> was, she said, so since we're not getting pregnant, since it's not happening, like, I'm going to buy a supercharger for your car. Like, okay. And then it turned out that weekend we can see Bella. Mm -hmm. The week she bought me a supercharger for my car. So it was Did you take that back? I don't even put it on. <laughs> and it was actually like a special order, like, part of the you know, dealership. Okay. So like that. So, like, it was, it was ironic that it happened that, you know, like, Bought a supercharger for my car, and then that would be good to see Bella. And then um, Bella was just a gift. I mean, if, if she didn't think she could, she could get pregnant because of the lupus and everything like that. Like the doctor said, it could happen, it might not, but it happened, and it was it was a blessing in disguise right there. It's like, oh my goodness, it's happened, you know? <laughs> so, Did like, she have normal pregnancy? If the, like with Bella's normal? Bella's was a shit short dissociation when she was born. Like it was just a little, like, I never know, turned. Oh, just turned? Yeah. That's where, like, they had it, like, push her out. But she had a vaginal birth? Oh, yeah, yeah, all that. That was, that was. Or it was around her neck? Nope. Or anything no. Like that. No. Okay. Oh, my God. So, Bella was born mm -hmm. December 17, 2013. And Bella was, she was a guest, so we just go along with Bella. And then around, and Cece was born uh, July 17, 2015. And we had this whole little thing uh, staged up with Bella in the crib and a little eviction notice. Like, she was there, and it, it worked out pretty well because she was just standing there crying, like, you know, like, I don't want this type of thing, you know? <laughs> it's not one of those that went, like, viral on Facebook, so that's weird. It would be yours. <laughs> yeah, it was, and she was just sitting there crying with a little eviction notice, and she had, on, she, had she recorded it. It was really, it was an amazing day to see that. And then she, she left, she was, she was, I was there, like, she had a midwife for this one. So, like, they actually had me, like, oh, you can stand here and, like, you know, catch her, and, like, but Celeste came out, like, so fast that, like, 
I barely had a chance to go like this, and they moved me out of the way because she just, like, came out. So it was, I mean, Celeste, I was a lot better with Celeste because with Bella, I didn't really know, like, a lot, like, what I should do, what I could do, how to calm, stuff like that, like, you know, burp, right. swaddle, everything like that. Like, yeah, I didn't, you know, yeah, well, yeah, I, was, I had, like, no idea. I just pretty much watched, like, all right, how do you do this? And then with Celeste, it was more of, like, that's why Bella kind of, like, she's a mommy's girl. Then when Cece was born, did you pair with Cece or Celeste? No, okay. no all right, when Cece was born, it was more like, all right, I know what, I know how to change the diaper. I know how to do all this. Like, yeah. like I can, I can do this. I can help like a lot more. That's why Cece is more of a daddy's girl now. Like whenever she gets in trouble, it's just like she's in. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And she now gets mad because like, all right, don't, 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 don't cuddle her. For when she gets in trouble, like she's, right, she's in trouble. Leave her alone. Like she just bit Bella. She just like hit Bella. Like don't, you know. Don't go, don't, 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 cut, don't, don't coddle her. That's where I'm going to coddle her. So it's like having them both around is just like absolutely, absolutely amazing. They're like two peas in a pod. Like, well, Celeste is more than rambunctious, just like all out. She either goes or she's sleeping type thing. So she's always, always getting in trouble, always like trying to find something to climb, jump off of. Like, Is that like you or is that like Shanann? Bella's more like me. She's more of a calm, just like she's cautious type thing. Like when Cece, I think, fell off of Bella a little bit as far as like, all right, she's, she's, she's my sister, she's the younger one, she's or she's she's the youngest person in here besides me type thing. And she kind of fell off, off, off of her and some of her friends that like, you know, came over. And that Cece just kind of like built that that attitude. She was just like, yeah, she was, she's a rambunctious little, little much again, like if I to show you a picture, but I was off, but like when she was on the plane, Coming back, I mean, she just had this, like, this face, like, like that, like, don't, don't, like, keep. And she was excited to be on it, there, or? Oh, it was just, like, she was, like, being, like, you can imagine a kid, a little kid in a plane in a seat, like, she feels, like, she doesn't move around, she doesn't, like, you know, sitting in the same spot, mm-hmm. type thing. And then, um, when she then told me about the third child, it was just, like, her, hope, oh, let's see what we got now, see if we can, Boy or girl, I mean, we're trying for a boy. So, now we're just like... Is it a boy? We haven't told anybody yet, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can right. they find that out that early, or...? At 12 weeks, they could find out. Really. Uh-huh. She had one... The ultrasound was... Last week. Let's see. Yeah, it was last week. So, found out it was... Were you both there for Yes. That? Oh, nice. Yeah. So it was like right when we got back, so it was like, I went back on the 8th, so it was on the 8th, so I was a little shocked. Get my days mixed up, like now. I'm not sure even what day it is right now. But yeah, we had um, all the 15th day. <laughs> I was thinking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, but all that kind of stuff, but like, yeah, we haven't told anybody yet, so. So both the girls were born out here, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, was Bella was born at Good Samaritan. Um, CC was born at a Vista. Did um Cheyenne go through any like postpartum or anything no. like that with either of them? No. No? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything like that. Good. Did she breastfeed? Yes. Both of them? Yes. Okay. Very cool. Bella a little longer than Celeste. So she was so Bella was how old when she got pregnant with Celeste? So they're about nineteen months before. Okay. So like ten months old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you were like, oh my goodness. No, we, like, we didn't know if it, if it could happen again. So. That's true. So, so were you guys even using protection, or are you just like, it's not going to happen? So, it's, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Okay, it is yeah. Okay, so keep going from um, after Celeste was born. So, after Celeste was born, I mean, we, we kind of thought, I mean, like, we kind of see how two kids went. Just, the, I mean, they're just like rambunctious, you know, they're just, they're just sister love. And now they're four and three. That would be. Five in December, so it's like if it happens, it happens. As far as like having like she used fertility drugs on both Bella and Celeste. Oh, she did. Yeah. Okay. Like this, the third child now it was she was on like no medication, nothing like that. But she's just on Thrive. Like she's healthy. She feels healthier now. Mm-hmm. And then like with with the Thrive, she really thinks that like I mean we only tried like twice, and it happened. 
So she really thinks that it was more of like being a healthier person. Sometimes yeah. just having the stress off, like, you know, having my kids, so this is just a bonus. Or, you know, oh, yeah, like that. Too, yeah, like, that is definitely like. Seems like a lot of women think, oh, we're, you know, they can't get pregnant and they have a baby and then they're, you know, they're not worried about it anymore. So huh? then they get pregnant again. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't think it was happening again. So, definitely. Yeah. So um, tell me about after that. So. So just like yeah, after we did we didn't think it would actually happen. So like we really think that like, have being on like being a healthier like lifestyle, being healthier, really helped this. Like I mean, only really trying twice and boom, and like it happened. So it's just been. And when did she find out she was pregnant? I would say it was in probably the first or second of June. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. That's not very long ago. Yeah, and she's about fourteen, fifteen weeks right now. Okay. So, uh, why don't you bring me up to, let's start, why don't you start with, like, um, so you guys went to North Carolina, so maybe just start for your, from the trip to North Carolina. I guess you met her there, maybe, for part of it, is that right? Yeah, like, she was there, so we got back from, we went to a Thrive trip in San Diego, it was the like end of June, Okay. and then, I think it was June 26th, last when we came back here, her dad was watching the kids. And then that same, like, later on that day, they flew to North Carolina. Okay. So why don't you kind of start there and just take me up until yesterday. Okay. And so, as detail as you can. Okay. okay. So, like, while they were in North Carolina, it was, like, they're there to see my family and obviously her family and just kind of, like, because they haven't seen the kids in a while, as far as our kids. And um, so they were just there. Just, she had a couple things she wanted to do there as far as, like, like meeting up with her promoters and customers that she had a bunch over there in North Carolina so she was hoping that she could meet everybody else over there and have like her dad my her dad and mom and my mom and dad like have fun sorry with the kids mm-hmm. and um, babysitters heck yeah I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah it was mainly like just a, a little family like a little family vacation for for them right now for them on that trip just to, for everybody just to see the girls and Celeste's birthday was during that on July 17th. Oh. So they had a birthday party there with, um, with like jumpy houses and stuff like that. And they FaceTimed me during it so I could see it. They didn't have a birthday party out here for her because it was, you know, when they got back it was in August. So, right. So, but uh, yeah, I got to FaceTime and watch it all. And it was pretty much just hanging out with family the entire time. Okay. Yeah. And I was here just going to work and working out and going running and, just keeping keeping the house up and doing that and just I waited till it, my flight was July thirty first and I flew out there for a week and I was I was I flew out there for weeks so I could fly back with them so we went so July thirty first I got there stayed at mom and dad's house the next day we drove to the beach stayed there for about four or five days it was in North North Myrtle Beach and we first time the kids had seen the beach. So they were ecstatic, obviously seeing waves, being being in the sand. They love sand. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they love sand because it's just like you get them back, you just got to shower them off. Because Cece was so like into the the beach that I mean, her bathing suit was just full of seashells. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay, let's just get let's get all this off of you and rinse you off, please. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was an awesome trip. Like just seeing them react to the to the ocean, and then we went to like Broadway at the beach. It was a uh, and we just like, had like an outdoor little mall, and they got to go in these like little, you know, like with a strap you in a harness, and you get to jump and jump, like jump higher. Yeah, and, yeah, and Bella and Celeste, they just, they love that. They just love jumping that high. It was amazing. Nice. Yeah. And then um, I got, I went to see my grandma, my dad's mom. She's in a nursing home. So like she's, some days she remembers people, some days she doesn't. And luckily that day she did remember me. So that was, that was really, a good day mm-hmm. to go in there and you can in there with Shannon and the kids and obviously like they had already been there a few times while they were there. Sure. Yeah, and they were uh she lights up when she sees those kids. My my I call her Mama. That's what she always calls but uh Mama but she light up but up when she sees the kids and she remembered me and that was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my dad came picked me up and I went over there and stayed with my parents for for a day and just kinda like hung out with them, saw my sister, her husband their kids have a cookout and everything, and it was awesome. And then the next day, we, it was the 7th, yeah, August 7th, yeah, we 
went to your parents' house, had everything packed up, ready to go, and flew back here. And then got back on later on that night in seven. And then on the 8th, I went back to work. And then on the 10th, that's when Shanann flew out to Arizona with uh, Nicole. And I had the kids from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we went to a pool party on Saturday with uh, Jeremy Lindstrom's, uh, his son's turn four. And they had a little pool party and everything over there, or a little mini pool and water balloon fights. It was that yeah, epic time. It was great. <laughs> That was awesome. That was awesome. It was just seeing their faces and seeing how much they, I mean, they didn't really play with water balloons that much at all. So, she, she, like, she would come over. She, like, she put one right in my pocket and just smacked it <laughs> while I wasn't looking. She's a, a little trickster. So, it was, that was, that was funny. And drove home, got back home, ate. And it was a really awesome day. So, that was, that was on the fun. That was, that was on that Sunday. So, got the kids back, got them all showered up, got them to bed, and just pretty much waited around, waited around for hair function in, because that was, she was flying back that night. And her plane got delayed, because like, there was like, there was a lot of dust storms in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there was like, there was some other weather around that was delaying flights getting in there, and they didn't have a crew, that's why it was, it was delayed. So, her flight was supposed to get in around 11, but it didn't actually get until about 2. So it was about like, you want to go into this now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So about 2 o'clock, she came into bed. Like, at about 1.48, my doorbell uh, picked up that she came in. But at 2 a.m., that's when she came in. She came into bed. And about 4 o'clock, that morning, so my alarm went off. So that's why I usually get up, get ready for work and whatnot. So I get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, deodorant, and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if take a shower because I work on the oil field, but like, I'll take a shower when I get home. Type thing. And, uh, she told me the, the, when, before she got in that, like, I want to wake up, you know, like, when you get up, just, like, take a shower, get the airport off, you type thing. So, like, I woke her up about after I got ready and everything, and then we had to talk about, like, the, selling the house and about separation and stuff like that. Like, it was an emotional conversation. Obviously, we were both crying, and after we talked, it was, she said she was going to take the kids to a friend's house, and that should be back later on that day. So, I was like, okay, that's fine. So, I went downstairs and packed my lunch and put on the water jug and got my computer and everything and loaded my truck up and I went to work. And then I got, once I got to work, started, started working in about 7, 7.40 or so. So, I texted her, like, hey, you know, I heard from her. It was like, okay, like, I didn't know where she was going. Like, I didn't know what friend's house she was taking to, or where she, what, what friend she was going to with the kids. So I was like, hey, you know, text me, you know, let me know where, where you went, where you took the kids. And I didn't hear from her. Like, it's normal for her not to respond to me, cause like, when she has her direct sales, direct sales people, like, she'll get back to them first, because like, that, that's what she does. Mm-hmm. So, like, if for her, like, not to respond back to me, uh, that's, that's happened plenty of times before. So, I'm um, continue working, and I know it's like, it's about noon, she hasn't got back to me, like, hey, you know, call me. Like, I've called her a few, I've called her once before that, too. And then about 12, 10, that's when I got a door bell alarm on my phone, saying someone was at the front door, and I was cold. And, uh, so I called her, and I was like, hey, what's going on? So, like, I got her from Shanann, like, all day, and no text, no calls, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of strange. So, like, Nicole was out the front door, and she's like, okay, her car's here, I can see her shoes, like, because we have this little, little rectangular long window next to the door. And she could see her shoes right there and whatnot, she's like, alright, something, something's going on. So, like, she called me, she's like, alright, like, I can't get a hold of her, something's going on. And that's when I came home. That's when I started, that's when I left to come home. So, um, Nicole called me, she's like, alright, I'm just, there's this kind of police, police officer here, we can get here. I'm like, okay, like, I was, the kids, they couldn't get in because the latch from the top door. Was, that's, that's what we kind of put over just to make sure, like, you know, like, if the kids try to go out the front door, they can't because that's there. But the keypad on the outside of the garage door doesn't work. So, like, they had to wait until I got there. I got the, the garage door open or I hit it, went inside the house, and, I mean, car's there, car seats are there, purse is still there, phone, the phone's on the couch, like, her wedding ring's sitting on the nightstand. 
And it's like there's like no sign of Bella Celeste or anywhere. And it's like the police officer, I forget what the police officer's name was, but he was there and he was just, once we found the phone, powered it up. And all the text messages like came through as far as everybody was reaching out to her and everything. Like, hey, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Everything good? And there's just like, there was nothing there. Like, it was just like, it was a ghost town. And everything that was there just didn't make sense as far as like, why? Like, what happened? So we started like reaching out to a bunch of people. Like, any, any of your friends that like, anybody that had reached out already that, you know, like had a car seat or like, like had a kid in general. And nobody had heard from her. Nobody had, I mean, nobody had a clue. Like her mom didn't had reached out to her. My parents, I mean, nothing was there. And the, uh, officer and detective, Bob, Bob Hover, detective, I'm not sure if you know the people that are involved. Um, yeah, I can't remember how to say it. Oh yeah, I think, uh, detective Bob Hover, he, he came and, uh, they're all like, you know, take, taking questions from me, Nicole, her son Nick, that was there. And then, uh, went over to, uh, my, they talked to my neighbor, cause he has a camera facing, like, he picks up a few different, uh, angles and whatnot. And, uh, watched his video, surveillance, didn't see anything as far as her leaving at all. So they're just like, alright, like, like, where, like, how, like, how this happened, like, like, there's no, like, video of her, like, leaving the front at all. So, we are just, we didn't know, we were just at a loss for words, like, alright, what, where is she? Like, she wouldn't just leave everything here. Like, even the kid's medicine was still there. And I was just like, alright, she needs that. We are just, the only thing that was gone was really the kid's blankets. Like, everything they slept with, like, you know, Celeste has, like, this big New York Yankees blanket, and a little dinosaur, and, like, a little dog that, that makes noises, and a turtle, and something out of a whole package. And Bella has two has two blankies, but one was still at the house. The other one was gone. And she has a dinosaur and like a little swan blanket. Her other little. Um. You said the next thing you know is her getting into bed with you. Is that right? I could not felt her getting into bed. We didn't say anything because I just I just kind of felt it. Okay. Do you know if she was on her phone or like how any of that works? I don't, I don't think she was on her phone. Like, I mean, it was, it was really late. So what is her, like, routine for when she comes to bed, like, before she gets into bed? I know it's kind of weird because she was coming from the airport, but, like, on a normal night, like, does she brush her teeth, you take our makeup off, yeah, like, give me that routine. Yeah, so normally it's like, all right, she'll definitely she'll brush her teeth, she has some makeup remover, like a rag, and she'll do all that. We'll take her balance, which is, like, a something to help, like, stomach, you know, help everything. It's like, a, no, I don't think, like, a laxative, but it's something like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, she'll go through, she'll do that, and then, pretty much it, and then she'll lay in bed, and she'll text people, call people, like, if she needs to, as far as, like, anybody, a promoter, customer, anybody needs her. Does she, um, charge her phone next to the bed? Does she mm-hmm. go, okay. What about, I heard she had an Apple Watch, is that right? Yeah. Did she charge, does she charge her Apple Watch every night? Oh, uh, charger's sitting right there next to it. I mean, but does she do it every night, or does she yeah. wait till the other mm-hmm. phone is dead? Uh, she usually puts it every night. Every night. She yeah. doesn't sleep with her Apple Watch on? No. Does she sleep with anything else on? Usually a t-shirt and underwear. That's about it. T-shirt and underwear? Yeah. Okay. What about that night? Do you remember, or that morning, I should say? I, I think it was a t-shirt. I think it was a t-shirt and underwear. I mean, that's because it gets, it gets so hot in the house. We had issues where the uh, top... The AC for the top level and then like cutting out, but it just felt hotter upstairs usually. Okay. So like, I mean, I just sleep in boxers and like, I know that, you know, she, we're both like furnaces. So like, we're in bed. So. Okay. So a t-shirt underwear, like, do you know that or are you just, I'm just asking? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you see her like outside I, of the I just saw, I just saw her like, you know, here. Oh, that's when like my thoughts were crawling the bed. Did, was there hugging or kissing or anything else that went on when she got into bed? No, I just, I just, I just felt feel her getting into bed. Where is your, like, how do you sleep? I, I sleep, I sleep, I sleep like, uh, like facing the wall. What side sleep. of the bed do you sleep on? So I'm on, like, if this is the bed, I'm on the right side, she's on the left side, so I'm usually like this. I'm usually on my back or the side. I'm not a stomach sleeper or anything. Okay. 
So your back is to her, basically. Mm, that's when I get off. I kind of feel her because the that bed is it's like a feeding bed, but like it's it sucks. And I I can feel her. Yeah, in the bed. Okay. And then um, as far as like jewelry, does she take off jewelry? I don't know if she wears jewelry. It's the only thing she wears is a wedding ring. Does she wear that to bed? Mm -hmm. The only thing, like, the only time she ever takes it off is color her hair. To color her hair. So she keeps it. Now, was she, has she, had she stopped wearing it at all because mm -hmm. of, you know, you guys mm -hmm. going through your hard time mm -hmm. or anything like that? Like she wore it to Arizona and yeah. all of that? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, so, because I think, was her ring left in the house? Yes. Um, was that unusual? Very. Like you found that to be odd. Yeah. Not yeah. If she cut her hair, it'd be in the bathroom, and then she put it right back on. Did you see any um, evidence that she colored her hair? Like to no, because she just colored her hair the week before. Okay. Because uh, I think her her mom and her they're gonna do it because her mom's a hairdresser. Okay. So. So she does it with her mom, or? Well, she was gonna do it because her mom's a hairdresser there, but I think she just colored it on her own. Okay. She was as far as like evidence of maybe her changing her hair to a different color, like to you know. Disguise herself? Like, did you get any? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, most of the time she likes to keep her hair black. Okay. Um, so she gets into bed, you feel her get into bed, and then is there a conversation? When, no? she, when she gets into bed, no. Like, it's, we just, I wait till I get up. Okay, and then you get up at four, get ready to stop, and then what happens after that? That's when uh, she told she had told me the night before, like hey, you know, when I get home, I wanna I wanna get up so I can get the airport off and take a shower, you know. Tell me what that means. Well, I get the airport off of me, you know, like type of thing. Like she didn't want to just you know get in that late and top in the shower and stuff like that. She just wanted to go to sleep, so like she wanted to get up like when I got up so she could take a shower. She wanted to get up in two hours. Oh no. She thought that like she'd be home at eleven, but that wasn't the case. Oh, so she did she tell you that when she was yeah. supposed to be home at eleven? Yeah. But did you think feel like maybe she still wants to get up and No, I, just, I, I, I if I assume, like I know I'm just you know, it's not gonna be in trouble. That would be in trouble. So like, why did you wake me up? I was supposed to this I've 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 done that many times and I learned that you, you have to just do it to what she says. Okay. <laughs> when it comes to that, because it's just I don't want to make her mad, so Okay. So, um, she ends up, you wake her up, how do you wake her up? I just like, you know, like, I'm, I know it's like, not to like, you know, you know, go like that, you know, just kind of like, rubber shoulder, just kind of like, really lightly, because she'll give me the alligator eye, like one eye open, one eye shut type thing, and like, look at me, like, what the hell are you doing type thing? But like, you just kind of like, rubber, like, rubber head just a little bit, just kind of wake her up, like, slowly, not where it's like, jolting her or anything like that. And that's all over up. So are you outside the bed when you're doing that? I, I slip back into bed. So you're in bed doing that? Yeah. Okay. On top of the covers. Like on top? Yeah. Okay. Because um, I'm in my work clothes and everything like that. Okay. And what does she say? She's like, uh, I asked her, like, hey, you want to wake up, take a shower? And she's like, uh, you know, I'll do it. Like that. And then I, I, I told her, like, can we, like, can we talk a little bit? And she's like, yes. Let's talk. Like, was she groggy at all? Or was she? Not when she, I mean, she was pretty. Pretty with it? Yeah, pretty with it. And surprisingly, but like, it's just pretty with it. Okay, and how did you start that conversation? I told her, you know, like, you know, we need to sell this house. Like, we need to downsize. We need to get something to where we're not, it's like, it's not strapped so much. Because, I mean, the house, I mean, we're paying, like, I mean, can I go down unless we're paying off for the house? Yeah. It's like 2700 bucks a month. And that's, that's, that's a lot. And, I mean, with the kids' school, like, it, it was a lot, so it was just like, all right, if we can like sell the house, like she had already contacted the realtor like the week before through an email, so like the realtor already kind of knew about like that we were interested in selling the house. So like, and how long have you lived in that house? Twenty thirteen. Okay, so in May twenty thirteen. Okay. So like, yeah, I went through that. Actually, like I was, you know, maybe just get something smaller, like Brighton. North Glen, just, I mean, somewhere that's cheaper. I mean, I know nothing's cheap right now, or just something. But like, I told her, you know, like, and told her about what I was feeling. Like, I didn't want to text her. I didn't want to call her about like a separation. Like, like really, like, 
I wanted to be face to face with her talking about that. And so tell me how that comes from somewhere. It was just felt like I, I just don't feel the connection anymore. And that like how we were, how we were together, like it just wasn't working anymore. And that like the love that we had in the beginning, I don't feel that anymore. And that I mean, she she says you know like it's more of just just crying and emotional, and it was. Was she mad at all? I mean, being crying crying like she was crying like I was. I mean, yeah, I mean she was upset. But I mean, it was, it was, it comes with that kind of conversation. Like, I, I didn't. Did she accuse you of anything? I mean, she, being a woman, I mean, she's like, is, is there somebody else? I'm like, no, there's nobody else. I mean, this is, this is me talking to you about this. This isn't like somebody came into my life and took me from you. This is, you know, me talking to you. This is just me. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no outside influence coming from this. Like, this is what. Trying to this is this is how I feel. Did she seem like she believed that? When I told her there was nobody else? Uh-huh. Yeah. She I mean I believe her when, you know, like if I I believe that she would never have like an affair on me and she knows that I wouldn't do that to her. Like we've like I mean, we've talked about that before, like many times like Did she ever her. accused you of that in the past? No. Did she ever like suspected like anyone else that you're close to? Like way, way, way early in our relationship. Like you know, when when we first got together, and I was still getting me- messages from people that was, girls I was friends with, and she asked questions and like stuff like that. Like who's that? Like how do you know her? Like, and I was just like, I would just like you know, not talk to them anymore. Just like ease her mind type thing. Was she like a jealous person that would you know look through your phones or? I mean, she had full access to my phone. I know, but did she? I'm sure she. I mean. If she used my phone for Facebook or like Thrive or she you know, would use your phone for that. She used, yeah, yeah, because she like she would she would run like like that's from the Thrive stuff through me. Like she would like make a post for me, something like that. Oh, stuff like that. Did you do that as well? Like, did you log in? Ah, uh, no, no, or no, 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 no. Like, like the only reason I logged in on Facebook like the last few days is to show the cops. Like, like other pictures and stuff like that, or okay. or show like the news crew a picture or something like that. Okay. Because she had a she had a log she had it on my phone as well. She could just like log in there too. And she needed it's like she did it because like sometimes her phone messed up and she just used my phone and his phone was right there. And then hers was on yours as well. Is that right? No, she just used mine. No, but as far as you can be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She can toggle well. back and forth. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she just I log out of hers. Go in the, yeah, it was just, it was one of those things, like, she knew I could sell. <laughs> she was trying to help you out. Yeah, it's like, she would just use, like, any friends that I had, and just went from there. Okay. So how did the, how did the conversation with her, like, how long did it last, would you say? Say, like, so, like, from 4.15 to just, like, closer to, like, 5. Okay. And I guess I'm, I'm a little confused, because you talked about the, you were telling her, oh, let's sell the house and get a house like cheaper and bright. Well, just like I wanted to sell the house just for, like so we can get like if we do separate, like we'd have like some money to ourselves and we could like like if I was hoping she would stay here, you know, like because she had told me before like you know if we did separate like she couldn't afford to live her on her own and she said neither could I. So I was just like. You know, like, give it a shot. Like, whatever money that we could get from the house, like, you know. Fish so you were talking food. about you guys buying a house together somewhere. It was more like, I mean, let's sell, sell it, house. split we it. Sell and it. it. Like, we can, we can go. Like, we can, we can have some money left over, like, and have, be close to each other. Tell me about, um, I know it sucks when we sit here and talk to someone about all this stuff. Um, tell me about your financial situation. I know twenty seven hundred dollars is a lot for a uh, house payment. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, how much were you paying for it at Primrose? I think last year we paid like twenty five thousand dollars. So what did they pay? Like eighteen twenty thousand. It's a valuation. I think it's close to like five hundred some dollars a week. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, what other bills do you guys have there? Uh, surgeries. Front of the neck surgery. What happened to her neck? Uh, uh, disc. 
that was compression down. There was like nothing. Like there was no like fluid. That, like the spinal cord with the fluid, the support, it was it was just bone on bone. And she she had a scar like right here. Did she have insurance for that? What? Okay. Yeah, but it was. Four left. But it was, it was like over a hundred thousand dollars surgery. So how much of you guys would have left to pay on that? Uh, she she covered all the finances as far as like that. How long ago was that? That surgery it was last. Uh, no. Earlier this year, I can look on my phone. <laughs> um, I thought it was last. Yeah, it was last year because I remember Christina from Hawaii came to help, and it was during football season. Okay. So I think it was last August, September, October, somewhere around there. Okay. So fairly recently. Yeah. Okay. So what other big bills do they have? Uh, CCs. Um, like endoscopies for EOE. Mm -hmm. Cause you had acid reflux. Okay. And, uh, allergy testing and CC had a clogged, uh, tear duct. And, uh, yeah, uh, tubes and radiators and their adenoids removed. So goodness. So there was that. Yeah, there was that that What medication are they on? Are they on some medication? Um, they have inhalers for like uh for they were going through like they like they said it was like child asthma, but they couldn't call it asthma because they're so young. So they would have like a little inhaler, the albuterol inhaler there. And CC had singular, which was for allergy, like okay. um and Bella or and CC had a too for the acid reflux. Okay. And that's the stuff that you give them at night, pretty much? Well, members all, I just kind of give, give CC to that when, uh, just throughout the day, like 30 minutes before she eats. I just got to remember, like, somewhere in there. It seems like I give it to her at night. Okay. Okay. Um, so what other big bills do you have? I think that was mainly what we had in credit card bills. How much do you think you owe on credit cards so I guess it's like a random guess. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess about eight to ten thousand. Yeah. I'm um, I have like. You don't do the finances. <laughs> no, because I, I mean, yeah. Since she she knew like like when she met me like, the one stupid thing that I did was that I sold my four wheeler for less than I, and I, that I owed on it, and she just like that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Never trust in my hands. I'm like, okay, I can do that. Right. What about like car payments and stuff? Um, car it was paid for by the bill. Which one? The car was paid for by Thrive. Lavelle, Lavelle is a company, and Thrive is a product. Oh. So she's if if, you, if your team sells over twelve thousand dollars a month, they give you a car bonus. Oh. Yeah. So they pay the bill, the car bill. Yeah, they give you about eight hundred bucks a month. And can you drive the car? Like is it a family car? Yep. Very nice. Yep. Oh. Driving is so crazy. Okay, so what yeah. about any other bills or any other? I'm between the surgeries and the kids, uh, low operations and credit cards, the house, just like utilities, stuff like that. And we, we did file for bankruptcy like two years ago just because of everything that was like on our plate. And how much was discharged in that bankruptcy? I am not sure. Like not, not, or fall for... It includes you know, cars and you know, all sorts of stuff. No, cars wasn't part of it because cause she was uh she was split the bell at that point in time. I think it was it was mainly like a lot of like maybe furniture we owed on, um just all, everything that it's hard to even ballpark number honestly because it wasn't medical like we if medical banks was different than just normal banks I think so like none of that was touched. And the house, it, it was still, you know, it, that wasn't part of it either. Didn't touch that, yeah. No. So it was just like anything else that was like, like outstanding or pending. But I, I couldn't even put a ballpark in touch. I really don't know. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. So how would you like classify your financial situation? I mean, with, with everything that we have going on, I mean, like with, when the kids like go back, when, when they're, when they're going back to school, it was, it'd probably be like pretty much like check to check if, you know, cause 
most like she had taken out a loan on my 401k as well to catch up with the house payments. Okay. How much did she take out? Ten thousand. Okay, when was that? So I'm gonna say five months ago. I mean, ballpark in that, but because we were like almost three months behind. Was it so? Was it close to being repossessed, or were you guys? No, like uh, we had a letter from Chase. That's who the lender's from. What did? How did she feel about the situation you guys were in? I mean, she was stressed out about it. I mean, that's why we took the four hundred one k loan out. That was the max we could do, and just put it all towards the house and like get caught up. Mm -hmm. So are you current right now? I just got paid August. Okay. When was, was that due on the first? Uh, due by the sixteenth. By the sixteenth. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and who do you guys get health insurance to your jobs? Yeah, you're not healthcare. How much do you pay for that each month? I think it's like three. Oh, every two, every two weeks. Three hundred and fifty. I think it's. Our, I'm trying to think now. Is seven hundred a month? It's. I don't think my last pay stub, but maybe it's like five hundred something a month. So I'm trying to think. Like I'm looking at all the deductions that we have coming out for like me plus spouse and child type thing. Mm -hmm. So they don't they don't classify it as like you know like if you have another child it goes up it's just like you know you plus spouse plus child yeah yeah okay. so I think it's it's every two weeks kind of paid biweekly so I'd have to look at my last check but I think it's about maybe it's like five cents a month. Okay. So that's um, health insurance. What about life insurance? Do you guys have any life insurance? Yes. Yeah, I got a uh, one for and through work and then one for both kids through work. I think Bell and Celeste is like a twenty thousand one. I think that was the max you could do. Twenty thousand a piece? Yeah, I think that's what the max you could do. Over, you know, yeah, yeah, and then like I think Shenan's is like fifty or a hundred. That's what the max you could do. Okay. Do you guys have any, any like other place life insurance for the new year? I think Shenan has like a, like her own and I have my own type thing. Okay. How much do you have on you? Uh, no clue. Why, why would you know what, what you have? No, did she get it? She did it. She did, she did, oh. she did all that. Because, like, like uh, I think um, the person who introduced us, uh, my cousin's wife, she did, like, insurance. I think she did it through her. Oh, and what's her name? Uh, her name's Nicole, because they're not together anymore. Uh, Nicole Kennedy. Nicole Kennedy? Yeah. Oh, they're not, they're not married anymore? No. Is she, are you guys still close with her? Or like, would you talk no, about I don't her? think they have Shannon or Apple now. They did have yeah. a comment? Yeah, There's something about like, like her old boss and like some like money thing as far as like him and some like, and it, was, it was something that I didn't know about. Are you starting to say embezzling? Yeah. Okay, like the, he was the boss of embezzling or, or did they or, accuse Shannon? I think it was the other way around, but I had like no like really details about it and it was just like, one was saying one thing, one was saying the other. It's like and it, just, I just want to make sure I'm not getting this mixed up. Yeah. Here. The boss maybe maybe accused Shanann of embezzling yeah. money. Yeah. And how long ago would that have been? Well, that was like before, right before I met her. Like 2010. Yeah. Okay. And where was she working? Was she working at that? Like her boss, like her boss is the one that owned all the wheel shops. And I think Nicole again had to update her. I mean, if she was in, she did insurance at that point in time. And okay. So whatever happened with that, like the boss accusing your wife? Or uh, they're 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 still good friends. The boss and your wife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's actually he's like putting everything out on Facebook, like to everybody. He has contacts all around the world. Mm -hmm. So they're still like yeah, they're just trying to get him on Thrive and all that kind of stuff. I think he actually uses it, but not right, but he uses it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you said. Uh, Nicole and Shanann have are now falling out because of that. Nicole yeah. Kennedy. I, there, there's, there's like there's so many Nicole. There's like Nicole. Nicole. There's Nicks. There. I don't want to get all this like mixed up. So yeah, Nicole Kennedy. Yeah. Okay, but you don't talk to Nicole Kennedy either. I haven't talked to her in years. She didn't reach out to you after all this no. happened or anything like that. No. So do you have any idea like what policy Shanann would have gotten on you? Like how big it would have been or 
You probably know what you're worth. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I know I have like a dismemberment thing at work. If I get dismembered, it's like two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. or something like that. But as far as like anything outside of work, I'm I have no sh- no clue about the dollar amount. I know she set all that up. Okay. For her and you. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever help her with that at all? Like she she handles all that. Like she's like she always did books at at the jobs, like at the wheel stores and everything like that. She was really good at it. Okay. She's, I mean, she's great with money, so. Who is she? Yeah. Okay. And she knows exactly, like, all right, I don't need to pay this right now. I can pay all this. And, like, and she knew, like, where where to get the outer money. Like a show game. <laughs> I'll pay this right now, yeah. And she knew what the priorities were. Mm-hmm. So. so how are you, um, like, how are you right this moment with your financial situation? Like, do you have money open on credit cards, money in the bank, like, that kind of stuff? Yeah, like, uh, so I think in Chase, we have, like, maybe, like, 2000 in there in USA, probably about 1500 Is Are those checking accounts or those just checking? Checking? Yeah. Okay. As far as credit cards, like, most of the ones I have used credit cards, I know they're, like, pretty much, like, she pays the minimum on it, so, like, I don't use them. The max out, probably. More than likely, I mean, if they're with the interest, with the interest, in, interest payments mm-hmm. and whatnot, just pay the minimum, they don't go down much. But like, I don't like Capital One, maybe has like a hundred bucks left to spend on it or something like that. And like the Credit One and the other Capital Ones, like I don't, like I know those probably don't have much on them, so I don't even use them. Mm-hmm. So when you're um, talking to Shan up in the bed about, you know, your financial situation and they should separate and that kind of stuff, like does she ever like act out against you, like, you know, being pissed off, like slap no, you? No, like no, like you no it's not about financial situation in general. No, 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 like like that morning when you guys oh. were talking in, in bed and she's oh, crying no. and upset, like does she act out? Oh no, no there's no you? we've never like raised a hand to each other, struck each other, like we don't even I mean, we don't even really yell at each other. Like it's like when we talk, it's pretty civil. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, there's, there's, no, she didn't raise a hand. She didn't yell. She didn't do anything like that. Okay. And like, you? No, uh, no, 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 not her. Definitely okay. not. Okay. So when is, um, like, how long did you guys end up talking to that? So it was about, oh. almost about five. Okay. So about 45 minutes? So that was like, give or take, yeah. Okay. And then she tells you, I'm taking the kids to a friend's house, but I'll be back later. Yeah. And she didn't tell you what friend that was, or did she? That's why I was very vague. That's why I texted her later that day, like, hey, like, you can tell me where you went, where the kids up, like, where you took the kids. Like, yeah. Like, no. Okay. And then um, you do what after you get out of bed? After, after, yeah, so, like, I go downstairs and pack my lunch, make a protein shake, down that, put my water jug up, get my computer, get my book bag, and put some more tools in my truck. Yeah. And your truck is where at this time? It's over on the corner of the house. Hmm. Yeah, it's over on the uh, west side. And that's where you normally park the truck? Mm-hmm. Like either there or across the street where the neighbors is over there. Because I had to park it over there because someone there's somebody going through the garages and cars parked on the outside, like stealing stuff. Like in your neighborhood or yeah. just inside like in, the, in our neighborhood. There was like three or four nights in a row, like they found somebody. Like on um, on cameras. Like, so are you saying you park the the truck a little closer to your house, or? Well, like sometimes I'll park it on on the neighbor's side for his camera faces. Oh, just so they can touch it. Just like it, like it's my my doorbell camera doesn't reach that far. Okay, and hey, do you know where what his camera angle is? Like, have you looked at his surveillance video? He told me where to park it. Oh, he did. Yeah. So that I could watch it. Yeah. Okay. He told me to park it like right. I didn't want to park in front of the driveway because I didn't want somebody to back into it. Like if his wife or somebody didn't forgot, like, oh, there's not usually a truck there or something like that. Mm-hmm. They want somebody to back into it. Sure. So tell me that morning exactly what you did with your truck. And- yeah, so I got in my truck, full forward, backed up to my garage so I could get everything in because I'm not, like, since it was over the weekend, like, I had everything already in, inside. Like, I wanted to see it. I had my big clear container. I had my O rings and, like, my headphones or my ear earbuds and everything like that. And I had to get a couple like uh, combination wrenches, opening wrenches from my toolbox. I knew like I was gonna rebuild some stuff a stuffing box that day or helping before I do that. And Cody and uh, Melissa and Trump and Chad were gonna be out there too. 
So I had to get some opening wrenches and stuff like that out of my own toolbox because that works better than the ones like because they're for longer more torque on them. So I okay. got all that threw it in my truck. And are you talking about you do stuff in the back of your truck? No, or in the back of your compartment. I got two big clear containers in there where I can keep keep things organized. So that, like I like if I have somebody riding with me, like if I were like a ride along or something, like because I do trainees every once in a while, mm-hmm. so that they they can have their stuff in there too, so I can just slide stuff over, move it. And just like they can just jump into. Okay. Okay. So, um, you load all that stuff up, and then, like, how long do you think that takes you to do that? Five minutes. Okay. So like five fifteen to like five twenty-five or so. Okay. And are you actually backed into the garage or just in the driveway? Back then, old like not really back into the garage because her car was sitting in the garage. So how far in the garage do you think you were? Quarter of the way. A quarter of the way? Oh, it's not mm-hmm. nine, a quarter, I mean like an eighth of a way. <laughs> okay. Is it a big truck or an F-250? It's F-250. Okay. That's, that's it, yeah, it won't fit in the garage because it's long, so. Okay. Um, do you load all that uh, stuff up and then what do you do from there? Uh, in the truck and pull forward or, or hit the button for the garage door to close and drive. Off. So how often do you actually take your tools out and put them in the garage or in the house or wherever you put I take that container out. I usually do it like on, like on Fridays. Like I got everything done. Like get it in there, get it in there. So that normally you would take it out on Friday and then that Monday when you go to work you would back your truck in and load your stuff mm-hmm. in. I mean, yeah, that, that's pretty normal. For me. That's a normal yeah. thing routine that yeah. you do. Okay. Just because you don't want to leave it out there for the weekend. No. Yeah, yeah, like that, especially if it's somebody like riding or like going around trying to steal stuff out of like trucks or things in the. But during the week, you at least work oh, yeah, it yeah. for the camera or something. Or yeah, like I'm usually pretty deaf. Or I, well, I'll like like back it in on one side where like if somebody had to go up to my truck, and my doorbell camera will get it. Okay. Okay. Just something like that. Just something trying to be like proactive about it. Sure. So um, you end up pulling out. You put you put the garage door down. Yeah, you know? I did. I had the, the opener. Give me an idea of the route that you take to work because I don't know this area and how you get to work and stuff. I think it's kind of work out in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, like what's the route you took? So um, like that morning? we'll have like fifty two. I'll have like fifty two, and then go out to like wild ones out. So so start from like your driveway. Like what street do you run? Unless you get right out to 50. Oh, I just found out like uh, Saratoga Trail and then Wyndham Hill Parkway. And just tell me right to the left that you're going. Okay, so Saratoga Trail, take a right, Wyndham Hill Parkway, uh, roundabout, take a right on counter 7, take a left, counter 52, take 52. And this morning I went out to, uh, went out to location, so we're down 52 uh, east. Out to I-76, out to, I don't know that road, but out to Rogan, and out to a ranch, Sorry, ranch. I don't know, it's like 380, kind of like 386 or something like that. Do you have like a GPS that gets yep. you there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, well, the, the, I knew, I knew the way out there. I mean, oh. I, I, my whole area, like, I know where it really is. Do you have a truck GPS, like yep. a yep. Garmin or whatever in your No, no, or? like, it's just one that, like, Tracks your speeding and like hard braking and stuff like oh, that. Oh, like your employer has a yeah. GPS on your car. Oh, okay. Seatbelt usage and stuff like that. But as far as like one. Oh no, like what, 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 on ahead. my phone, oh, on my work phone, there's like a well navigator type thing. Like if you like, if I was going to a spot like out of my area type thing, like I could use it for that. But usually I can just like type in, in my computer on the directory and I can look up county road like intersections. I can get there that way, but. All the ones I have in our area, like from County Road 22 um, South, that's our area, all the way like to the airport. Okay. So like I've I've been to pretty much every single one of them. So like they somebody says that I'm at the Thomason 21 16, like okay, I know where that's at. Or someone okay. tells me I'm at, or, you know, I'm at the Richie Gas Unit number one, I know where that's at. Someone tells me I'm at the Mars 28C, I know where that's at. Okay. So this one you went to what? Which wells did you go to when you got I went to the survey uh, three nineteen, survey eleven twenty nine, survey ten twenty nine, survey six twenty nine. So which one did you go to first? Three nineteen. Three nineteen. Yeah. Was anyone else there? Um, they showed up afterwards. Like Troy showed up, Melissa, Chad showed up, 
and uh, Cody was at the 1029. And I know Troy's last name. Um, McCoy. Melissa. Parrish. And then Chad McNeil. Cody there? Roberts, he was out on the ranch as well, but he wasn't at that one yet. Okay, okay. So you get out there about what time, you think? Probably about 6.45 or so. Okay, and you get out there, you're by yourself out there? At that point in time, because Cody had, Cody Roberts, he had reported that he had a leaking line out there on the back pressure line of the, I know this might make sense, but the back pressure line going up to the tank, and there was a, uh, there was a spot on the ground, like a, a wet spot, like a, like oil was leaking. Okay. So he said, like, it just kind of happened on Friday, and I was, and Troy told me about it. I told my dad, you know, we'll So did you out. go right there with him to try and help him fix that, or? Well, Friday I wasn't at work. No, I mean, but Monday morning. Cause like he was going to make me out there. Oh. But he decided to go to that 1029 first to uh, check on that pump unit, get it trying to stroke up, trying to see if it will like, get some pump action down hole. Okay, so you're at 645 at um, or 319. Well, 319, and where you're, like, what time is your, do your other people show up? Probably about, I'm going to say about 715, 730, somewhere around there. And I'm like, I'm trying to pressure test the line to see if I can find a leak. Did they and, see you? Like, I mean, yeah. like the yeah. truck's out there, and yeah. you're out there, yeah. and yeah. Okay. you have a conversation? Yeah, oh yeah, everybody's out there, like, we're pressure testing the line, we're digging that line down a little bit so you can see something spraying out. Like, so why are I guess I'm why are they not there when you're there? They went to the office first. Most of the time, like they either they go to the office first or you go to the field first one too. Okay. Like we have a couple guys that start out the field, some people start out the office. I just knew he had a leak there over the weekend. I was just like, all right, let's, let's see what this is. I don't want this like getting like somewhere where it's gonna get so big that it's gonna be like, all right, we got a, like a health safety environmental issue on our hands. That's sure. like there. Okay. Um. And as far as you leaving at 5.30 and getting to your place at, you know, 6.45, is that normal? Like, you would normally leave at 5.30? It's, 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 oh, like, y'all used to do between 5.30 and 6 o'clock, somewhere around there. Okay. I just knew it would take a little while to get out there. I wanted to be out, like, but we usually, like, start at work at, like, 6.30. Okay. So, like, if I'm going to the office, I'll leave, like, 5.50 or so. Did you pick up anyone on the way or stop oh, no, like, anyway? Oh. Like, at the convenience store, gas station, any stops? No. On the way out there? No. Okay. So you go straight out there, all of a sudden the coworkers start showing up around yeah. 7 15, 7 30. Yeah. And then how long are you at that well? Probably till, because we were at that 10 29 like for most of the day. I know at the 10 29, we were probably there at 11. Because we were there for probably maybe about 10 o'clock, we were there. But at that one location, probably about an hour. Trying to get, because we had to dig out that line right where it was leaking, right where, like, because when the pipe comes out of the ground, it was leaking, like, maybe, like, a foot underneath it. And what happened, like, it either, like, something, like, ate through or corroded the pipe. And when we were pressure testing the line up to a certain, up to a certain PSI, we finally got up to a certain PSI, or, and it just started just, like, bubbling oil out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And it was... I don't know anything about that, but that sounds bad. I can show you a picture, but... <laughs> That doesn't sound like that's how it's supposed to work. So. Okay. okay. So 11 o'clock, you're at 1029. Yeah, I hit the, the other two locations I told you about in between because the 1029 were there for the rest of the day until I left. So 319 till when, do you think? Probably till about 8. 8 a.m.? Yeah. And then you go to which well? I stopped by that 629, but I wasn't there for very long, for like 30 minutes. So cause I had some whip checks that maybe that because that wellhead we were getting ready to turn back on but it was missing two parts at the wellhead i didn't i thought i had two whip checks only had one so i was like oh okay. do that and who was at that well when you get there? No, there okay and then the next well number is what the 11 29 i drove over there to see if it was ready to run it wasn't so and what time do you think you got there about nine okay and then you were there till 11 in the ocean? no i was there till almost about by about 10. Oh, 10. Okay. Yeah. And then where did you go after that? 10.29. Oh, you were there from These 9 to 10. These are all well numbers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no, I, no, I, no I, it's good. So you were there from 9 to 10 at yeah. the one before 10.29. Yeah. And then you were at 10.29 from 10 o'clock till... Until I left. Until like 2 o'clock or... Until 1 o'clock when I left. Until 1 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, because we were there for a while. We had to replace sucking box rubbers and take everything apart because the, the rods were getting so hot. And who was at 1029? 
That would have been Cody Roberts, Ty McNeil, Melissa Parrish, Troy McCoy. Those were all. So you guys know. all kind of just pop around yeah. to the to yeah. wild or whatever. Not on that day we did. Because okay. Melissa Parrish, she's one of our green hats as a trainee. And uh, it was Cody's route, and Chad is another one of our field coordinators, along with Troy. Okay. Mm-hmm. They were kind of showing her the ropes and that yeah. kind of stuff. Okay. okay. Uh, anyone else of your coworkers or anyone else out there? Nope. That was the only one. Would anyone else have seen you either on the way out there or um, out there when you were? No. Like, no, I didn't stop anywhere. Like, I just. I, I did you wave to anyone? Did you, you know, anything like that that you can remember? I know it's early in the morning. I, 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 mean, I called a few people, like, while I was out there. But for some reason, like, it, it, you know, like, when you call somebody and it just, like, it just says, like, connecting or whatever it's doing and it doesn't, like, start to actually ring until like, the seconds start to come up, like, one, two, oh, three. Oh, right. It just kept, like, said dialing or it's... Up and who were you trying to call? I was trying there? to call Cody, Roberts, trying to call uh, Troy and Chad. And none of those went through? No, they were trying to call me and it said the number you have dialed cannot be completed as dialed or something like that. Okay. Did you make any other phone calls? No, the, like I texted them. I texted them. Cody and yeah. them. Yeah. And you texted and then, them. And then, I, uh, and then I, uh, I got a hold of Luke. I think I finally got either from this phone or this phone and told him, like, hey, I'm out here. I like, like a phone call? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. So why did you t- is that normal that you would Well I was just I was just talking because like seemed because uh I think uh Troy or Chad told him like they were trying to get a hold of you and uh like nothing every, every time it said like the phone number can I can can see that dial and like I was like okay I'll call him and just let them know like hey you know I'm not oh, sure what's going on with the phone. Weird. Yeah, like uh, that place sometimes you get hit in the oil field mineral, it's hit and miss as far as like because sometimes you have like a radio tower here and there, it just knocks out everything. Okay. And you said you tried earlier that you Tried to call Shanann, is that right? I texted her at like 7.40. Sorry, I just didn't that. I'm so sorry. Uh, you texted her when? 7.40 in the morning. Okay. And then, did you ever try and call her during the day? Mm-hmm. Okay. When I'm not sure what time of that. I, I can't get my, that far on my phone now. Did that go call. through? That yeah. Call? And I did it from this phone. And did she just not answer it? Yep. Or? I just went to voice now. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, did you call anyone else? You call the police department, you call um, Nicole, I can't remember. Uh, oh, know. like from, like right after I couldn't get a hold of her? Yeah. So like at 12, 12, like I texted her, or I called her again, and at 12, I texted her again, like, hey, call me. And then at 12, 10, that's when Nicole showed up at the house. So I got a, I got a alert saying the doorbell detected a visitor. And that's when I called her about 12, 20, like, hey, what's going on? And she said, you know, Shannon hasn't uh, got a hold of anybody or answered anybody for, for today mm-hmm. since she got home. So. Okay. And then I asked her, like, or, 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 I just, like, looked in the, she said the house or the shoes were laying next to the door and the car was still in the garage. Is that weird, the shoes thing? Why did she bring up the shoes thing? Well, because you could see them sitting right there. She, I mean, but are they that's the one, that's, that's the ones, like, she was wearing, I guess, uh, in the airport. Oh. I think. Just you know, those ones she wears. Like, she has a couple different flip flops that she wears, but those are, I think, those are the ones she probably wore from the airport because okay. they're sitting next to the door. Did you find any of her shoes in the case? She had a whole shoe closet. You wouldn't know. <laughs> if no, there were some. There, I mean, it goes up the wall. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I thought I heard something that maybe you called um, Primrose or. Yeah. No, I asked that. You know, I, I don't remember what time that was. I asked if the kids were there. Oh, okay. Was there any other conversation you had with them? Or? Well, I just told them like if the uh, that we're more than likely going to be putting the house up for sale, and that like I'm not sure if they're going to be like like because we might not be in the area anymore. But I wanted the kids just back on the waiting list if we're not going to be there. Sure. Um, I know like at our daycare they charge on Mondays for yeah. the week. Is mm-hmm. that how Primrose works, or yes. how do they do it? Yeah, because like that was going to be the first day back. Okay. Yeah. And they would have charged your card or whatever. Five hundred bucks, or when they showed up, yeah. Okay, okay. So you were just giving them a heads up. Yeah. And did you already know that they weren't going to be there? No, that's why I called them just to see, like, if they were there or not. Because she said she was going to pick the kids, their friends out. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay. That's why I called. Like, maybe, like, maybe she ended up taking them there. No, but no. Okay. Uh, any other phone calls to anyone else? 
other than Nicole, like when she showed up at the house. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. And then you can't get a hold of her, Nicole's there, and then that starts that whole process where mm -hmm. you end up driving home. Is that mm -hmm. right? Did you call anyone on the way home or call anyone on the way home? Uh, I called Lou. I let them know, like, hey, I'm going home. I can't find Shanann or the kids. I don't know where they are. And he's like, okay. Just, just let me in there. Okay. He seems like a pretty cool box. Yeah. Pretty yeah. understandable. Yeah. Understanding, I should say. Um, okay, so what? You're driving home. You're calling Luke. Did you call anyone else? Text anyone else? Mm -hmm. What route did you take to get home? Uh, the same one, like I-76 West. And then... 52 west and then took that home. Okay. That's pretty much 76 to 52. That's much How right big is this area, this branch or whatever that you guys are working on? Huge. Like in like miles, is it miles by? I mean, we're not the only operator out there. There's like Verdad, there's Lost Creek, there's. But your area that you're responsible for, where the wells are on, like. So that one. Or square mileage. Maybe 10 to 20 square miles, like as far as width goes. Like, if I could, like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's huge. And that would be just your responsibility. That's, okay. that's, that's our area. That's Cody's route. Okay. Because we have six route operators and they all have individual routes. So, what else is on this land besides uh, cattle? Cattle. Lots and lots of cattle and sheep. Okay. And lots of, like, little irrigation, like, uh, Spots where they eat and trees and sunflowers and lots, lots so of lots. So, like flowers. when you're driving out to the wells, is there actually a road that you guys made, or it's it's, it's, it's full. It, sometimes it's a road when the cows and everything get on it, it gets really soft and really like like shake your truck type thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as your truck goes, um, aren't you the work truck? Kind of yep. Thing? Um, are you allowed to have other people in your truck? Like as far as civilians, like your wife, your kids, or anything like oh, that. Oh, they've they played in my truck a few times because it's my wife's daddy's truck, you know. Like they played in there a few times, and whatnot. What about Shanann? Has she ever ridden in your truck before? Not to work, but she's been at it before. Okay. Just like just seeing what what all I had in there and everything like that. What I take to work, stuff like that. I guess she's been there before. Okay. That's not yeah, a like, regular thing. Oh, like we aren't allowed to allow them, like take civilians like places in it, but other unindarko employees or like when I have a training and stuff like that, like they ride with me. Okay, that's totally fine. Yeah, okay. Um, So you get home, and obviously you said you open the garage door and um, go through the house. Tell me all the things that seemed odd about the way the house looked. That's so odd. it was, well, the, the car being there with the car seats, I was odd. The purse, wallet, still being there. Phone, oh, phone's a big thing for me. That's still there. So she seemed like she was pretty attached to the phone. Well, everybody knows she is. She's very attached to it. Okay. And the kids' medicine. This is the odd things. What about her meds? Does she have medicine that she would take? Only one she takes regularly is Imitrex, and that was not there. Like the medicine she had in her purse was for nausea, not Imitrex. So what is Imitrex for? Migraines. And that was gone? That was not in her purse. Like the one that they said was in her purse, they thought it was in her purse. No, it was like for not just once I read it. Okay. As far as, do you think it could have been in her luggage that she left there? Or? I'm not sure. It would have been in her purse. Okay. Did just you go just, through her luggage? Like no. looking for clues? Or? I didn't go through her luggage yet. Okay. But like their, her image like suspects to have that, like, you know, which within hands grasp. You said the kids' beds were like pulled back, or how were the kids' beds? They weren't made. They weren't made. No. Okay. Is that normal? Very normal. Okay. For the morning, yeah. Okay. Especially so because the kids they just like throw everything and just like get out of bed. And what was your bed? What did it look like? Oh, uh, the sheets were off of it. Okay, tell me about that. Like most of the time when she gets out of, like she she gets home from like a flight or something, she gets in the bed like in the airport. She's gonna wash the sheets the next day. So that's what I thought when I got home. That she had woke up and yeah, she like, was yeah, stuck in the bed or yeah. whatever. Yeah, okay. Are those sheets in on the bed now or no? I don't think so. Are they still in the piles or whatever, like where she put them? I think because I put like I washed 
I washed everything and I put uh, different sheets on there. So where are the sheets? So you washed those sheets? Did you put them away in the closet or something? Uh, closet? I, it should either be like right on the pile on the ground or something like that, right there. In the bedroom? Yeah. Okay. So I do you wash the sheets that were on the bed or you left mm -hmm. them there or just put on new sheets? So I put on new like I uh I washed those sheets. I washed sheets that were on there and they should still be in the room. Oh, clean, like, yeah. in a pile or yeah. whatever? Okay. Yeah, but I put, like, ones that were in the closet in there. Ones that were already clean, like, I already I wanted to just make the bed anyways. Okay, so the bed's made now? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So when you slept on the bed Monday night, it had new sheets from you changing it, or? So Monday, yeah, like, when I slept there Monday night, yeah, there was new sheets on there. Okay. Because the bed was already stripped. Yeah. And you got in or whatever. Yeah. Anything else that was odd? I know you said there was some things missing from the kids' rooms. Or their blankets. Blankies. Yeah, okay. blankies. What do you think about that? I mean, that's what they kids always take with them. Like, even to go, like, if you. Yeah, like, if we went, if, like, like, she, she, she wants that Yankee blanket. And Bella, like, wants her blanket, especially if she feels like, like, you know, we tell her, like, like leave her at the house while she's getting old enough. But like, but, like, if you're going to Target or run errands, like, are they taking this stuff with them? Uh, Bella will. Well, CC definitely will have that Yankee blanket, and sometimes she wants her little, that, like, that dog that, like, makes cooling sounds and whatnot. Okay. And that's gone, you said, right? Yeah. That dog? Yeah, but Bella's cat's still there. But she is attached to the cat, and she wants to the dog? Yeah. Uh, not as much. Not as much. Okay. Anything else missing weird? What about um, the pajamas that they were in that you put them in after they shed, the nightgowns or whatever? Yeah. Are those at the house? I didn't see those. I mean, there's still like, there's like dirty laundry in there from the kids. Okay. But like, I didn't see those per se. I didn't see those. And then there's, there's some nightgowns in there, but I didn't see those. Not the ones I described to you. Okay. Okay. Um, so obviously, you know, you've had a lot of time to think about this stuff and, um, talking to me like what are your thoughts like what are you thinking right now as far as you know what's happened or like the first day i thought she was with somebody i thought you know like you know she's at a friend's house and she's just decompressing or not mm -hmm. but like now like after like yesterday and now today it's it's i feel like she's not safe but like either she is in trouble or somebody is hurt her and the kids and we can't find them. We don't know where they are. So if I ask you on the polygraph test if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, can you pass that yes. question? Yes. What do you think I mean by that when I'm asking if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance? If I what does that mean to you? If you ask me that, like I feel like you're asking me, did I have anything to do with it myself, or did I help somebody do it? And I had no part in any of that. I know it's totally awful to think about, but what are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? I mean, like, if you're talking about, like, what I've seen, like, on the movies, or, like, how, you, like, how people, if you read about other people, I mean, hire somebody like a hitman yeah i mean that's i mean yeah i'm just being honest no nope, that's what i want that's what i want because i want you to go through all of these scenarios in your head because i want you to know for sure what i'm talking about when i say that you know asking you if you physically caused her disappearance okay like like you'd hire somebody or you have a somebody you know that that would do it i mean it's like i don't I mean, it's hard. It's and, a hard and I know question this, to, and I know this stuff. It's a hard question to answer. Right. Because uh, I didn't, I didn't have nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. But like, I don't even want to think about like, if I, if if you're asking like how I would do it, like I no anyone, know, like anyone how would how would anyone cause someone else's disappearance? I mean, you would. Like you could cause someone's disappearance by murdering them. Do yes. you agree with that? Yes. So what different physical ways could you cause someone's disappearance through murder? You could stab someone, you could right? Stab someone, shoot someone, hit them with a blunt object. Um, 
Is there, I mean, use a weapon with like gun or a knife. I mean, okay. you could. Smother someone, smother someone, strangle someone, hang someone. I mean, yeah, you can all that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of stuff right now. Mm -hmm. so you could strangle someone. You could drown someone. Yeah. You could shock someone to death. Um, you could burn someone alive. Um, what other ways can you think of? Mm -hmm. As far as like, like lure them into a trap, I guess. So what do you mean? What? Like, you know, like have somebody waiting like around the corner and like play sure. an accident that happens hit by a car out. I mean, something like that. Sure. Um, like, I don't want to say about the same thing there, but. Um, you could kidnap them and take them and. Um, Lock well, them up in a basement like, somewhere, yeah. or you know what I mean. They they could still be alive, but you are. Like, they're, they're like torturing. So you can they like so take them somewhere, torture them, and let them sit there without food or water. Mm -hmm. Or even kidnap them and leave them somewhere that they are, you know, yeah. not being tortured. Yeah. Just that they can't get out, and you know, I'm sure they disappear because you not allow them to come back into society and have people see them. Does that make sense? Yeah. What other ways could you make someone disappear? Poison? Okay. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I know. Which one are you? I can beat somebody, I guess, to the point, yeah. like to the point where they're not conscious and they're in a coma. Sure. Um. So if I ask you that question on the test, Chris, are you gonna have any issue with that? About you like, physically causing like going through every single one of those? Yeah, like that would be a way right. you could cause someone's disappearance. Okay. I'm not, I I can definitely like. I can pass. I mean, I can. you can murder them, you can kidnap them, you can get to another country, you could, you know, bury them in your backyard. You could yeah. even do a million things. Yeah. As far as um, trying to conceal them. Yeah. Right. So that no one can find them. Yes. Because at, at this point, she's gone. Yes. And the girls are gone. Like we don't know where they're at. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. So we're assuming the worst, but hoping the best. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that you're kind of in that spot too. So. Yeah. Uh, if I ask you that question, if you physically caused her disappearance, so when I say physically caused, I say it that way because I don't want you to feel, well, everyone has guilt, right? And I don't want you to feel like, you know what, I um, I told her that I didn't want to be with her anymore, so I probably caused her disappearance because she obviously took off with the girls and because of what I told her that I didn't want no, to be with her anymore. I mean, that's, that's why I feel like a jackass right now. Right. So when I ask you the question on the test, I'm not asking you about guilt. I'm not asking you about, did you make her feel so horrible that she ended up leaving? I'm saying that you were the one that physically caused her to disappear, okay. either by murder, kidnapping, you know, all of those other things okay. that we went through, okay? You want me to list, you want me to list all those? Like, no, no, no. Okay. You're just going to say no to that question. Okay. But when I ask you if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, okay. your answer should be what? No. Right. So do you have any issues with that at all? And no. have any questions about what I would mean when I was? No, that's that's totally like I just like going through all those that uh, all the <laughs> That's right. a lot to really think about. Right. Like that's, trying to figure out like how to yeah, that was It's a lot, but it's very simple. Yeah. Because if you didn't have anything to do physically yeah. with her disappearance, maybe you pissed her off to the point that she ended up taking off with the kids or um maybe she became suicidal and, you know off herself somewhere that we just haven't found her yet. Like know. I feel like emotionally responsible, but I didn't physically right. hurt her. Exactly. That's the kids. Right. And that's what that's what I want to ask you about. Okay. Okay. Just physically causing her to disappear. Okay. And you were the one directly. Okay. I'm gonna ask you about Shanann. Okay. Um I think we can all assume that um wherever she Shanann is, the little girls are. Yes. So um, I'm just gonna ask you about Shanann. This can loop the kids with it though, right? What's that? That's looping the kids with it though too. Like everything just got like 
Because like when the FBI agent was asking yesterday, he asked about file lock about the kids, but like right. he was looping Shanann in with it too. Sure. Okay. So I want to know about Shanann. Okay. I'm going to ask you this test about Shanann. Okay. Okay. Like I said, obviously as investigators, we can kind of assume that um, they're all together okay. somewhere. Um, but I'm going to ask you on the test about Shanann. Okay. Specifically. Okay. The next question I was going to ask you was, um, are you lying about the last thing you saw? No. When is describe the last time you saw her? Last time I saw her, she was in bed after I had talked to her. Okay. Alive? Oh, laying in bed. Like, she just physically laid in bed. Okay. Was she crying still? Was she saying anything? Was she. She had just told me she was going to go to a friend's house with the kids. She'd be back later. Okay. And that was the last time I saw her. So describe what she looked like. Was she, like, on her back, on her side? On her side. On her side? On her right side. Could you see her face? Yes. Okay. What does her face look like? She had mascara that kind of running down a little bit. Okay. And that is... She didn't take her makeup off before she went to bed that night. Okay. Obviously, because... So, so to your knowledge, um, that is... That's the last time that's I saw That's the last it. time you would have seen her. Yes. And the last time I saw the kids was in the monitor as it was... Like, so obviously, if someone, you know, you know, we have to talk about worst case scenarios. Uh -huh. um, you know, if for some reason you murdered her, that would not have been the last time you saw her. Do you I agree mean, with that? I agree with that. Okay. Because um, obviously she's not in the house, and if she got murdered in the house, she obviously got out of the house somehow. Yep. You know what I mean? So at some point, the person, if they did hurt her or murder her, they would have saw her again. Yep. And if she was laying in the bed crying or, you know, with her yep. mascara running down or whatever. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. Okay. Um, the last question I want to ask you is if you know where Shanann is now. I do not. Okay. Obviously, um, you know, you've talk to the police, he's helped with the missing person investigation. So this would be more like, um, you know, maybe Shan did call you, you know, a couple nights ago, like, dude, just don't tell him, like, I just can't handle this right now, like, I just need to get away, like, just, you know, keep it on the down low, whatever. Maybe she told you that. Um, maybe if you were a person that murdered her, you obviously dumped her body somewhere or had someone else help you dump her body, um, you would know where that site was or where that place was. Does that make sense? Yes. No. If the last time you saw her was when she was laying in bed and she was alive and kind of having makeup run down her face, um, obviously that wouldn't be, you wouldn't know where she is, right? Because obviously right now we can't find her. Does that make sense mm -hmm. to you? Do all those questions make sense to you? Yes. So what, what would you answer to all of those questions? I had nothing to do with What's going on right now did not physically harm her. Okay. I did. The last time I saw her was in bed, laying on her side with some mascara on her face after we had a conversation. And I do not know where she is right now. Okay. So it. Yeah. Okay. So you nailed them perfectly. Um, who do you think would have hurt seeing one of those girls? Like, who um, do you think would have done something to them? Honestly, it's like we've exhausted like every option that we have of people that know. Like even if it's kind of crazy, like what is your one go-to like thought about what could have happened? That it's somebody I don't know, and I don't know who they are or what they're about, and that they have her and the kids, and that they're not safe right now, and that they've been physically hurt. So, obviously, like I said, we kind of have to expect the worst and hope for the best. Um, if we do end up finding your wife and your two girls murdered, what do you think should happen to that person that would have done that? The worst possible thing. Like what? I mean, it's either going to be like life in prison or the death penalty, isn't it? That's the only two things you really can do. Yeah, that's the only thing you really, that, that's the only penalty you have. I mean, there's some people that are like, well, obviously that person's really screwed up and maybe they deserve some, you know. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just know because it's, it's my, my wife and my kids. So, like, from a mutual perspective, it should be different. Mm -hmm. So, it's my wife and kids. Do you know anything else about, is there anything you haven't told detectives that you want to share with us today? No, I mean, we've, we've exhausted every option of trying to reach out to friends and family that may have seen her or heard from her. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we have like nothing really else to like go off of right now as far as like who could have her. 
or where she could be. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you take a breath and break. Thank You've been in here quite a while. <laughs> I need one as well. Um, let me find out which bathroom you're actually supposed to use. Hopefully one of them will come in here and help us um, figure out which bathroom. And then we're going to come back in here. And then again, I'm going to tell you how and why the polygraph works, and we're just going to get kind of into the testing. And right. That's cool with you, okay? Because you already know what the questions are that I care about. So, okay. All right. So let me see if someone can direct you to the bathroom. Okay. 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 Why don't hey Chris? Yes. Why don't you? Um, I'll just take you out to the lobby, and then I'll try to sit right there real quick. And so you have this here? Oh, you can take it with you, whatever. Throw it in your pocket. Wow.
Okay. How's it going? 